Hello everyone and welcome to my live bookshelf reorganization. This is my third one officially and I'm really excited. Be free, make mistakes, try things. So, so much fun filming these and just interacting with you guys. Just give me one second to adjust my screen so I can read all of your uh, chats because um, I'm excited to talk to you guys. but. Basically, a couple of years ago, I think 2016 was my first one, um, Sasha from Book Utopia used to do live bookshelf reorganizations all the time, and I just thought they were so fun, um, so I started doing them. My first one was like four hours, <laughs> and then the last one was like an hour and a half, and I'm not sure how long this one is going to be. We're going to just like play it by ear, see how long it takes me. Like I'm going to be on here until I finish putting all of my books on my shelves and I'm happy with them. So um, you can come back later if you cannot watch the whole thing or if you are just like popping in, this will be posted on YouTube on my channel afterwards. So you guys can always come back and watch it. And I hate that my MacBook makes me log into my keychain constantly, it's so annoying. But hi, really excited about this. Um, so feel free to let me know how you guys are doing what you guys are reading, and we are just going to organize all my books. So, um, I will guess I'll show you how many we have on the floor over here. We have quite a stack, and then there are some behind me, and more books over here. So we have a lot of books to put on my shelves, and I don't exactly know how I'm going to organize it. So I'm definitely going to be asking you guys for help. So like, let me know your opinions in the comments. Um, but yeah, feel free to ask me some questions that I will answer while putting books on my shelves. But I think I'm going to start with my mental health contemporary shelf because that is like the one that I know for sure how I'm going to organize. <laughs> I have a very loose idea. Oh, um, yeah, also. <laughs> I did already start. I'm sorry if you guys feel cheated. Um, there are a few shelves and I'm just like not moving because there's no point in me taking them off just to put them back the exact same way again. But I did already put together my Harry Potter shelves, which are those three, and then my Shadowhunter shelves, which are those four, which is unbelievable. I can't believe I have four shelves that I can digit Cassandra of their books. Um, but yes, so the reason I did these first is just because they, I have to put so much time and energy into organizing these. They literally took me maybe like 40 minutes yesterday to just do those seven shelves. Um, there's a lot of knickknacks and stuff, so I figured that would be too distracting for me to do on live, but now you can just appreciate them the whole time, which is awesome. But um, yes, the reason, I'm going to turn on my fan a little bit just because it, it is already so hot in here. Uh, if it is super annoying and you guys can't hear me, let me know in the chat. Um, so yeah, I got a fourth bookshelf and I'm really, really pleased. This is like what I wanted my bookshelves to look like when I turned this into like my library. <laughs> and I also have two more shelves right there that we are going to be also putting books on. But um, yes, I'm going to start by putting some mental health books on my shelf. Um, what books did you love a year or two ago that you may not really like if you read today? So funny that you say that because it's something I was actually thinking about today where I was like, you know, I was thinking about how it would be interesting to do a video where like you guys ask me for my opinion on like certain books that I'd read in the past and if I still felt the same way about them. Because there's a ton of books that I definitely don't think I would like as much the second time around. Um, oh, one that's literally on this shelf <laughs> that I'm putting on right now is Sad Perfect. Um, I really enjoyed that book. And none of my enjoyment has left. Like, I still feel very strongly about what the book represents for me. But I definitely think the writing would irk me more as I become more of a, like, critical reader over the years and I definitely developed a taste for writing which I did not have so long ago. So I think that's definitely one that I may not like as much but I do think that like if I were to reread it I would feel similarly about the representation. 
I have two big cups of water in here that I hope I don't run out of before. Um, let's say your outfit is so cute. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I'm Jordan. Thank you so much for donating. That's really sweet of you. Um, let me see. Where did I get my bookshelves? Great question. Everyone always asks. Um, these are from Ikea. They are the Billy bookshelves. Um, I love the white ones just because I think it's very neutral. And I feel like the books stand out better than on a black shelf. Also, pro tip. Um, the white bookshelves are like ten dollars cheaper than all the other colors, so that's always nice. Like, I always go into uh, buying a bookshelf. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna spend like seventy bucks or eighty bucks, and it always ends up being like sixty or seventy, uh, which is always cool. I really like them. Um, they definitely will have some wear and tear over the years, um, and they also don't stay white. Like, maybe people like power wash their bookshelves or something. I do not. <laughs> but um what was I going to say? Yeah, they they will like change color and become more yellow in my experience. But not too big of a deal. Um and another question I always get is about the lights. Because I adore my bookshelf lights. Um I used to use regular Christmas lights, but I always thought that the globe lights look better. So they're all from Target, like $10 a strand, and I have four strands on these four shelves, so usually like the amount of shelves I have is the amount of strings I need. Um, but $10, like what a bargain, and um, everyone also always asks me, how do you hold them up? And I don't know like if I have some magical scotch tape, but it is just scotch tape, man. Like, they do not ever fall for me, which is great. Um, love that for my bookshelves. It's very rare, but I just like pack a lot of tape, especially in the middle sections. Um, and it works out pretty good. Right now I'm doing my LGBT reads shelf. And I try and like arrange it like a rainbow, of course, but I can't, always difficult for me to determine like, how many books I can fit in here because it gets stacked up so quickly. Oh, I'm definitely going to need more water throughout this. Let's see. Was it Billy though? <laughs> um, let's see where my other questions are. Uh, I see everyone saying hi to Michael. What am I leaving for Europe? I am going to Europe. On August 14th, um, I will have five full days in London, I think. Five or four. Then on the 20th, I go to Paris for five days. What? Um, and then I go back to England for another four days. Um, it is unbelievable. I like cannot believe this is happening. But like it is like I have so much books. I have like all of my lodging books except for um, I have to book like an airport hotel the night I get in because I get in pretty late. And I do not want to go to the middle of London like at 9 p.m. That's just like not the move. So I'm gonna stay at like an airport hotel or something that night. And then I go to hostel, which I'm really excited about because, like, me being forced to interact with people, what is that? This is, like, the biggest interaction I have. <laughs> um, and then I go to my Airbnb press, and then my Airbnb in London. And it's going to be an amazing trip. I'm horrified for it. <laughs> I truly am. I'm very scared. I'm very nervous because I've never traveled before alone before but I am also pretty darn excited um, and of course you know that I have vlogs and all the good stuff coming of course I need to decide if I can fit one more book in here but I don't know which one to fit could this maybe work Wonder. Oh, 
that's like pretty tight in there. No, that's not a good idea. I have a really bad habit of like shoving my books, my book pieces, and then they get all disordered and I'm like, what the heck? Like, why are you doing this to me? I feel betrayed. But it's my own dang fault. <laughs> Ooh, I somehow feel like I freed up space in this shelf though, which is awesome. Because I literally am always running out of space on the shelf. I wonder if I put this under here. That would be I am like a Tetris crew when it comes to bookshelves. Like I am so good at fitting all of them on. That's like a hidden talent. Which is pretty cool. Okay. This is where I am lost, friends. I have no idea what I want to do next. Um, oh my goodness, whoever, who donated, Lucy, that is so kind of you. Thank you so much. How many different editions of Harry Potter do I have? Um, we can count. Isn't that awesome? Um, I have the U.S. hardbacks. Um, I think the illustrated editions, as I'm collecting them, like as they come out, count. So that would be two. I have the U.S. Paperback special edition, which has a um, Hogwarts uh, on the spine, so that makes three. <laughs> then I have a full set of Harry Potter in French. <laughs> God knows if I'll ever actually read it, but I can like understand a little bit of French. So um, maybe one day I have read Harry Potter in French to start. I read the first one. Um, then I have two. Of like six and seven I have in like the original um, French editions <laughs> so I guess that makes it five because I am like collecting a whole thing then I have um, two copies three copies of Just Sorcerer Stone one is the Slytherin edition one is the Gryffindor edition one is the 10th anniversary or 20th anniversary edition um, Oh my god, why do I have so many Harry Potter books? And then I have the original Bloomsbury hardbacks and the new Brian Selznick paperbacks. So I think in total that's probably like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine copies of Sorcerer's Stone and quite a few of those. It's one, two, three, four, five full sets. Ha, huh, okay. <laughs> um can you give me one of the books you don't need anymore? Um, I do donate books very frequently. I donate to my library or uh, my high school library. I like love giving to my high school library. They love me there. Um, or else I do, <clears throat> I do sell books on Depop and I'm going to be adding more soon. So you can always check out there if you want to get some discounted books. Um, where did I get the original Bloomsbury hardbacks? I bought them all off of Abe's, abebooks.com, I think. Um, one of those like thrift books and AIDS books always have like backlist editions and you can usually find them for pretty cheap. All right. So I'm debating, I have like two fantasy shelves. So I'm asking you for your advice for the first time. So I have, I could put one here and one here. So they're like right next to each other. Or I could do like a catty corner thing. So I could do like one fantasy here and one fantasy here and something else here. So let me know, should I do it both on the same side or in the corner? And I'm going to take a drink because I'm not used to talking this much at once. <laughs> so yes, please let me know your advice because I literally don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so some of you seem to like the corner. What am I saving that type right shelf for? Um, I'm not saving it for anything. I'm just unsure what I want to do with it. <laughs> um... Oh my god, it's so mixed. Okay, I see a lot of people saying the corner, so I think we're going to go with the corner. Um, yeah, I'm doing this very out of order because it's just sort of what, like, I just got to go with the flow with this because I have no plans. Um, so yeah, so we will do the two fantasy shelves there. Maybe we could do, like, two more contemporary shelves there, and it will be, like, a whole contemporary row. Um, also, by the way, I know <laughs> I have, like, 
a lot of people watching right now, which is so incredible. I'm like amazed that so many people want to watch you reorganize my bookshelves. That's awesome. Um, I will be missing people's comments, unfortunately. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but if you keep asking, like, it's not personal. Like, it's just the first one I see is the one that I'm going to be talking about. So just, like, keep asking if you really want to ask me something. And I'm not, like, intentionally rejecting. What do I like so much about England? Oh, I love everything about England. Um, let's see. I well, let me tell you the story of how I developed a love for England. Um, it really starts with Harry Potter, of course. Um, I have loved Harry Potter since maybe like fourth grade, and so England always equaled magic to me. So you know, it was like where Harry Potter was from and where it took place, even though I now know it takes place in Scotland. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's always represented this place of magic. And then um, when I, I guess it started with when I got into YouTube, <laughs> um, I watched like so much Charlie is so cool. Like, and so it was always really uh, fun watching him and like his friend group. Um, so I just like fantasized over him and like where he lived and I got to see parts of it. I thought British accents were just like the coolest thing ever. Um, the culture, like the, you know, I watched a lot of um, British television in my teen years. I loved Skins, of course, I still love Skins. Um, what else did I love? Doctor Who, of course, I literally just watched Doctor Who with my friends last night. It was a really good time. Um, yeah. Lots of like the t television, pop culture, like uh, in high school, I got into some like British music. I like loved like early 2000s, like pop music, end dubs, grime. I got really into that in all of high school. And yeah, I don't know. I It's hard to describe, but I just had like a really, really profound love for it for such a long time. And then when I went in, I was 17 when I went to England for the first time, and I spent a month there, um, and it was so incredible. So I'm really excited to go back and be able to experience it more as an adult. Hmm. Okay, what, what order are we putting these in? This is another shelf that I'm kind of just like recreating, um, because I really like the way it came out. This is like a sort of high fantasy favorites shelf not that i've read every single book on here um no there's like two sequels on here that i have not read yet but um i really like keeping genres together oh that's another question i get asked a lot like how do you order your shelves it's mostly by genre so i do like the big you know harry potter mortal instrument shelves and then I usually divide it down by like fantasy, sci-fi. It's uh, I don't have any historical fiction stuff. I don't know why I would do that. <laughs> I definitely do not own enough historical fiction books to have a historical fiction stuff. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Uh, I just always thought it was a cool way to organize them. Um, yeah. Alphabetical. I just feel like that's not organized enough for me. Like I need more categories than that. I can fit one more high fantasy book here but I don't know what that is so maybe later I'll pop another one in the sweater. Where did I leave my drink? Uh, let's see. I'm about to make some chicken nuggets and tater tots. That sounds like a really good sounds like a really good uh, decision. <laughs> um, let's see. Do I know what books I'm bringing on the trip? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not really planning on bringing any physical books just because I'm going to have to carry so much all the time that I don't want to have to carry physical books, but I'm going to get some stuff from my library on my phone. Let's see. Again, for some questions. I should be reading for a readathon. <laughs> That's very relatable. I'm starting a readathon in like two weeks and I'm so not ready. Um, let's see what other 
questions are okay. Um, am I going to vlog while I'm in Europe? Yes, I'm absolutely vlogging while I'm in Europe. Um, when is my next reading vlog? My next reading vlog has not been planned yet. Um, I haven't decided. It, you know, I'm the type of person where, oh, my next reading vlog is going to be my vinyl bibliography vlog. That's definitely, definitely it. Um, yeah, so Bino Bibliothon is coming. We are going to be doing some video challenges and reading challenges. It's great. Check out the Bino Bibliothon YouTube channel. Um, and it's going to be a fun time, so you should join. Um, let's see. Favorite character ever? Um, probably Jace. <laughs> That's like such a basic answer for me, I feel. But yeah, um, I love Jace. So much. He's such a baby. Uh, I actually, it's funny, I just read summaries of all of the Mortal Instruments books today because I am planning for my post challenge for the Bibliothon. I just figured it out. It's so funny. You guys are going to love it. So, yeah, so I was like trying to decide what scene I wanted to change because my challenge is change the scene. So, you like, you know, uh, what I did for the first movie we when this was a challenge, um, I took a breakup that had like a really emotional reason behind it, and I made them break, over, break up over something really dumb, and it was super dramatic and fun. And then, <laughs> so yeah, so I read all of those different, um, all of those plot summaries for all six books, and I was like laughing to myself thinking about like how much I love the series, and like, oh my god, when is the next time that I'm going to be able to read it because I miss it so much. But um, yeah, Jace just goes through so much character development and I love his charm and I love how dedicated he is. He's like such a layered character. Um, he also annoys the crap out of me. Oh my God, Jace Nolan is the worst. But you know, bottom what's important is. So yeah, I, I would say that Jace is probably my all time favorite character, but there's so many, like how can you really just pick one? You know what I mean? That's um, those there. This is like an urban fantasy show. Um, lots of Lip of Grey, Holly Black, Victoria Schwab. Um, I feel like that is Holly Black. Oh my god, those almost fit right on top. That would be but unfortunately not. Let's see, what if I push that all the way on the paper? See, this is like the awkward part of bookshop organization where I'm like talking to myself because I need to focus <laughs> on how to organize these. Oh no, I'm afraid I have too many books for this. I put this on. I'm afraid I don't have the space to put Holly Black books on. No! Okay, I'm gonna figure this out. I got this. We've encountered my first issue, but it won't last for long. <laughs> um, just put some pants on. I'm. I it, listen. It is hot in my room. Okay. I'm in the comfort of my bedroom. And it is hot and humid in New York City. Um, I don't know if you call Jace a baby or a baby, but both are true. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> um, do I prefer physical books or ebooks? I totally prefer physical books. Like, ebooks are fun every once in a while, and they're really useful because you can read them literally anywhere. But it's just not as fun to lay in bed and read a full like read just on your phone. Also, like my eyes hurt when I'm reading on my phone for too long. Um, do you find it difficult to have your books being horizontal and vertical on your shelves? Does it add more space or do you just like the look of it? I personally find that it, uh, pause, it like allows you to have more space and I also like the look of it. Like I really enjoy having books facing out like that, and so sometimes I will like stack the previous or the subsequent books in a series behind it. I, I definitely feel like moving it this way allows you to do more as opposed to just doing each individual book next to one another. 
Um, let's see. Which book by Cassie Clare is your favorite? Uh, <laughs> I have so many answers for this. I hate when people ask me this question because my answer is so extra. Okay, let me figure out what I'm going to do next. So, next up, I need to figure out what to do with those two shelves right there. So I'm wondering if I should do two contemporary shelves um, or one, okay. I could do contemporary, I could do sci-fi, or I could do thrillers. Like what, what do you guys think would look good there? I have like a lot of fantasy, so I'm not gonna should keep the fantasy going. I guess I should do more contemporary. Hmm. You know what? I don't know what to do. Let's, you know what? Wondering if it is time. Thriller, sci-fi, contemporary. Contemporary. <laughs> I'm just like waiting for all of them to roll in. I see a lot of people saying Contemporary, but then I feel like I have to do two contemporary shelves right next to one another. So actually, I'm not sure if that is my best bet. Okay, you know what? Let's do sci-fi. Sci-fi seems to be doing pretty well, so let's do that. Um, okay, so favorite Cassie Clare book. That's what we were talking about. Um, so. <laughs> so I have uh, three answers for this, I believe. I have... Number one is my favorite book of all time. Then I have my favorite book in the Mortal Instrument series, which is a different answer despite being in the same series. And then I have what I feel is Cassandra Clare's best written work. <laughs> so my favorite book in the Mortal Instrument series is, um, <laughs> why can't I have it? City of Lost Souls. Um, People are always like, what is it about that one that is so special to you? Why is that one your favorite? And I don't know. <laughs> I really can't tell you why it's my favorite. I just get like very significant feelings when uh, I get like really, I get really in my feels when I think about the Day of Lost Souls. You know what? I never thought of it this way before, but I'm wondering if Part of that has anything to do with the fact that when I was like in like the depths of my like high school depression and I was so freaking like depressed all the time, I had no one but my books. Yeah. Um, I'm just now realizing that City of Lost Souls was like the newest um, Mortal Instruments book coming out, and it's the one that I was like waiting for. Because City of Heavenly Fire hadn't come out yet. Um, so, uh, some of you know this if you've been watching my channel for a really long time. I read the Mortal Instruments like five times in a row <laughs> before City of Heavenly Fire came out. But basically, ooh, this is a really good question as I'm in the middle of this story. Which book am, do I display on my sci fi shelf, Renegades or Side? <gasps> Which one? <laughs> I don't know. What I could do is I could. I don't have an answer. <laughs> Which should I do first? Okay. I can't just lay bold. That'll take up too much space. <laughs> um. Okay. People are saying renegades. Renegade seems to be the word. <laughs> um. What was I going to say next? Yeah. So, senior year of high school. City of Lost Souls is the newest Mortal Instruments book. So I feel like that's why I might have gotten the most attached to it because it was like, man, I don't know. I can't explain it. It's, I'm, I'm trying real, real hard to figure out a way to say, like, why it's my favorite, but I, I have, genuinely have no idea. Um, <laughs> this is a very long-winded answer, as you can tell. Then, my favorite book in the Mortal Instruments series is City of Heavenly Fire. And it's interesting because every time I read City of Heavenly Fire, I go into it and I'm like, oh, this book takes so long. Like, I feel like there's so much waiting. Like, it's like 100 pages before there's any action. So I get a little pissed off in the beginning and I'm like, 
man, maybe I don't want to be reading this. And then, like, I get into it. And I just can't stop putting it down. And I thought that it was a very um, intriguing conclusion. I thought it was very well-rounded. Um, part of me is also, like, I kind of wish she killed, like, someone else. Like, I, I wish that there was, like, a death, a, a, another death. I'm trying to, like, say this without spoilers. I kind of wish that there had been, like, um, a more risky death, which Santa Claire has made in, either, in other works, but I feel like in the Mortal Instruments, I wanted something that was going to like break me, but there was no death that did that. But of course, there were other things that broke me and so there's fire. So I just think it's a really well-rounded conclusion. Um, now I have to decide what books I'm going to be putting on the top because I'm actually changing people. I am changing the books that I have on my sci-fi shelf for like the first time in forever. Um, and I'm trying to determine like the best way for me to organize them. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay, and then because every player's best written work. <laughs> um, I believe that to be uh, Lord of Shadows. Um, I just thought there were shadows. <laughs> was really immaculate. Um, I know it's long and I know a lot of people like got like frustrated by like, or were people frustrated at Lady Midnight? How long was Hoopsie got in to get into it? I know it's long, but I feel like the storylines are so rich and there's so much development in that story. And plus I thought the ending was like one of the strongest, most risky endings that I've seen from YA in a really long time. So that is why I think it's a Best work. Um, I don't know, man. Like Chain of Gold is coming up. Might might become number one. Can't tell. Who knows? <laughs> um, let's see. What is a character you really relate to? Um, a character that I really relate to would be um Elise Dombowski from. This song will save your life by Lila Sales. Um, this is a very, very underrated read. I literally feel like there's like so few people who have picked up this book and like have like I wasn't the reason because <laughs> almost everyone I know who has read it has read it because I've recommended it so many times over the years. But um, it is a story about a girl who is real. Uh, anxious, she has trouble fitting in, but she finds her like comfort in the world in um, like a, an underground club. So like she finds herself in music. And I just really related to that storyline when I was in high school. As we discussed before, I was very anxious and very lonely. So it was very meaningful for me to find a character who just never felt like they fit in and like no matter how hard they tried, they weren't able to achieve their goals and to feel connected to people. So that's why I feel very um feel very connected to it. And it's like the one it's one story that I like will always come back to as like being very significant and powerful to me. And I am trying to find out what other books I would like to put on this dystopian shelf, and, oh no, this is my sci-fi shelf. Oh my gosh, it is so weird to have my sci-fi books on up here, because my sci-fi books are always on there. Alrighty, let us move on from that shelf. Let's see, Um, what is my least favorite book of all time? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question, I honestly don't know the answer. Um, okay. Oh, shoot. I forgot I wanted to try and put this Holly Black books on that shelf, but I don't think it's happening. <laughs> Aw, that's a real shame. I wonder, I wonder if I did it like this. Hold up. The girl has an idea. Oh, wait, no, they're not going to fit up. Oh, I'm trying so hard to make this work, and it just 
this year that's what I was trying to answer um oh you know what I can do it for this year the original question was I've ever read I don't know that one but my worst book of the year is Hidden Bodies by Caroline Kepnes which is the sequel to um You which is the Netflix the show that's on Netflix You um it's the book that inspired that I hated the sequel so much it was it was uh, my first one-star book in literally so long, <laughs> probably like two years. It's been since I uh, read the book one star. It's not a happy camper. <laughs> Wait, I think I might have figured this out. Can I really put this all on here? That would be so Wow, I am incredible. Can you believe I did that whole thing right there? That's a beautiful shelf right there. Okay, it could be a little better, but I'm happy with that. <laughs> ah, all right, now we're moving down for a sec because all of the squatting is happening. <laughs> I should put required on your couple of Cassie's. Okay, that is what I was thinking. But I feel like there's too few books, and I don't know what to combine it with. So it would be like, it has to be like Rick Riordan and something else. But I don't, like, there's nothing else comparable that I feel like could also fit on the Rick Riordan shelf. Uh, you know what we could do in the meantime, though? Um, we could put my arcs on the bottom shelf, which is something I'm very excited for. Um, but let's see what other questions. People are saying, do a London meetup. I would very much like to, and I might be planning it, so keep an eye out on Twitter. <laughs> Have I ever thought about creating YouTube or BookTube? Um, no. I mean, I've definitely been frustrated by BookTube in the past. Um, and there have been times when, like, BookTube did not make me feel good about myself. But I've definitely, like, since starting, I've never considered stopping. I've never slowed down. Like, I've taken maybe, like, a one-week one break, like, three times since starting. Um, I'm really, really passionate about BookTube. And I don't plan on stopping unless I have to. Put my gesturing with Ricard, and that is such a good idea. That's what I'm going to do next. I would like to do... A requirement in middle grade shelf, but I have too many middle grade books that it's like too many on the same shelf. <laughs> um, anticipate a release for the rest of the year other than Chain of Gold. Some people don't know that Chain of Gold is not coming out in 2019 anymore. <laughs> uh, Chain of Gold comes out in March of 2020 now, so unfortunately, I can't consider Chain of Gold the most anticipated for the rest of the year. But my most anticipated would definitely be Supernova and The Toll. The girl is very, very excited. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's try with the Rick Riordan shelf, and then we'll move it down. What was the most recent book you have read and rated five stars? Um, I think it might be The Darkest Minds by Alexander Brecken because I'm currently rereading the series, which is really fun. Um, so yeah, I have been reading The Darkest Mind because I'm getting ready to read The Darkest Legacy, which is, oh, I didn't know the fact that this shelf is tinier than the other shelves. My, my top shelf and my bottom shelf are smaller than the middle ones, so I'll have to see how this works out. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to be re reading The Darkest Legacy soon, but I have been reading The Darkest Minds again, and I'm almost done with In the Afterlife. I'm like probably two hours away from being done. Less no, <gasps> I'm only like an hour away from being done. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. So yeah, um, I read The Darkest Minds, and it was literally so good. I read it for the first time in 2014. 2014? 2014. Um, and it was so good. <laughs> and I just reread it, what, five years later, and it was literally just as great. Like, wow, everyone needs to read. Oh, I think I just did some baseball. <laughs> um, what was I not saying? <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying. I was talking about Narcos Minds. Yes, Narcos Minds. So, yeah, um, I really enjoyed it. Again, it was so good for the second time. I'm very happy. Can't put it on my room. Let's see. This is something I can do. I always struggle with my required control because I love the covers and spines so much. All of his books look so fantastic together, but like I just have a lot of trouble fitting them onto my shelves in a way that's satisfying. Okay, so I can't do that, which is fine. It's cool. But let me check your comments before I move on and try and talk about this. Let's see. Um, What's a book I want to give a chance? Um, That's a really good question. Um, I would love to give Vicious by D.D. Schwab a chance. Because I haven't read it, and a lot of people love it, but it is out of my comfort zone because it's like an adult fantasy, almost. Is it a fantasy? I feel like it's a fantasy. I don't really fully know what it's about. But it's definitely out of my comfort zone. So it's something I would like to try because I know a lot of people love it. Um, so yeah, that would be really cool. Um, I have it, and I would like to read it. I just don't know when I will get to it. All right. Oh, that actually looks nice. Okay, so let me put on my Magisterium books, and I wonder, maybe I can do Nevermore up there. Oh, no, I definitely don't have enough space for Magisterium on Nevermore. I'm being an ambitious, guys. <laughs> Let's check your questions. Do I have any pets? I wish I did. <laughs> um, I used to have a rabbit named Peanut, um, but I unfortunately had to give him away. We gave him back to the pet store when we moved here because our landlord would not allow us to have any pets. And one, like, I feel like it's a missed opportunity to not put something at the corner over there, but I don't know. What I should put. Magisterium. I'm wondering if there's like any more middle grade I should shove in there. Oh, oh, I know what I can put up there. I can put order of these three off it. It might be a little tight. Okay, I'm putting um the dreadful tail of Costa Red. Oh, that's like a nice looking shelf. That's cute. Okay. <laughs> We're making progress. Look at all that. Um, do you write as well as you can read? Uh, oh, do I write as well as read? Um, I do not write at the present moment. <laughs> um, I would like to write a book, but I am so busy and I don't know how to write and I'd really like to study writing craft before getting to actually putting down on paper, but I do have a, like a very distinct idea in my head that I would like to explore in the future. Um, let me see. What was my favorite part about college school? <laughs> I loved, loved my classes. Um, so what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to do my art and then I will talk about college. So let's move this in a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to 
move my advanced readers copies over and then we're going to shove them into this bottom one and then work out. Um, so my favorite thing about college was definitely studying psychology. Psychology was always like what I wanted to study since I was 15. So having the ability to actually study it um, and learn all the things that I actually wanted to learn instead of everything I had to learn in high school was very exciting. Um, oh, these are all going to fall. <laughs> so yeah, um, I took a lot of psychology courses in college. I took like six extra classes as electives on top of all of my required classes. So I took a lot of psych and I love doing some psych. I didn't have a very, um, I have a very exciting social life in college. <laughs> so I can't say it was like the parties or the friends. And I didn't really join any clubs. Only in the very beginning and the very end. So unfortunately, that was my favorite part. But I really did truly enjoy studying um, psychology during school. And that was my favorite part. So the good thing about the advanced reader copies is that it's just um, I think so I don't have to go through like a very elaborate um, process of organizing them because it's all the same thing. Let's see the question. Um, has your reading nook changed since your video of you were decorating? No, it hasn't. Um, I've changed the books that are on the bookshelf and I've added more prints to my wall. Um, was my print wall up there when I did that? I think so. Yeah, so I've added stuff to my print walls, but that's about it. Um, what do I do with advanced reader copies? I don't like, I donate them to either my local library or my high school library. Um, otherwise, I like may keep them if I feel like they're valuable because sometimes people might want to trade them on books for trade. So that is always a good resource on Twitter. Trading with people is a good way to get rid of your art that you don't want. I want to move this closer. I'm afraid of my uh, plug out, <laughs> but I want to be able to read your comments. Um, what are up my books when there's no space left for my bookshelf? Um, I'm I'm pretty good at um, unhauling books when I don't want them anymore. So it has been a while since I've been like, wow, I have no space. But when I they used to uh, like literally run out of space. I would just stack them on the floor until I got a new bookshelf. Um, I'm almost out of space in here. Like I don't think I can really fit many more um, bookshelves in here, if any. But um, yeah, so I might run out of space at some point, and then I will definitely have to let you know how I go about that because it's going to be a problem for me too. <laughs> Um, let's see, if I had to sort Cassandra Clare's characters in the Harry Potter houses, where would you sort them? I love this question. I think it's so funny. <laughs> um, I think Jason is definitely a Gryffindor. I think Clary is a Gryffindor as well. Um, I think... I think Alec is... Ooh. Is Alec a Hufflepuff? I think Alec is a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. I'm kind of leaning towards Hufflepuff though. Um, there are some people that are going to very strongly disagree with me on that. <laughs> um, Izzy, I feel is kind of a Slytherin. Uh, Simon is a Hufflepuff. Um, Simon is a Hufflepuff for sure. Um, Maya, ooh, I feel like Maya is also probably a Gryffindor. And Sebastian's a Slytherin, duh. <laughs> Is that even a question? 
Um, yeah, that's a lot of that's pretty much all the world between characters. It's I used to do that a lot with um like the what was I uh, when I was doing the live shows for each book on the Mortal Instruments series, every once in a while we get a question at the end of it. So with the mental Hogwarts houses, and just like everyone disagreed, uh, which I find so interesting that our interpretation of characters are so different that, you know, we have different ideas of what their most treasured or, or um, the trait that they deserve the most. Oh, Magnus. Ooh, I feel like Magnus is a really that dude, that dude knows some shit. <laughs> um, um, so I'm so happy I'm back to organizing my events for the copy this way. This is like my favorite way to have them. I haven't been able to do it in quite some time. Um, advanced for the copy I'm most excited to read next. I think that would probably be um, I'm probably going to start Let's Call It a Doomsday by Katie Henry very soon. Um, it is by the author of Heretics Anonymous, which if you uh, watch my channel a lot, have probably heard me talk about. <laughs> so it is um, coming out in August when I have been adventure copy. And I am so freaking excited to read it. Um, I know it's going to be great. Uh, I'm actually going to be hosting the New York City event for um, Let's Call It a Doomsday, so you should most definitely come. Um, oh, I think that if you want to on here, awesome. Um, what's my favorite genre or style of movies? I am not a big movie person. Like, I like watching movies in theaters, but I'm pretty open to anything. I like horror, I like action, I like comedy. Um, I like a drama every once in a while. Like, I don't. I don't have many specifics that I, you know, I'm super, super picky about. Okay, so this is July 2017. So where are the next ones? I feel like I'm like missing a stack of events for your copies because I cannot not find them. Let's see. Um, are we talking about Hogwarts houses? My Hogwarts house is Slitherdor. Um, I am half Gryffindor, half Slytherin. Okay, so this is a, this is pretty big. Okay, here we go. Found I found the books that I was looking for. Oh, and everything is falling. That's really great, guys. <laughs> Hi, Zoe. I miss you. Oh, every time I like see one of my friends' faces online, I'm like, I miss. Book on so much. <laughs> um, do I ever read an art pass for release date? All the time. Um, a lot of times I will like, you know, like I won't buy a book usually anymore if I have the advanced reader copy and haven't read it because like I have the book already and that way if I don't like it, I don't have to spend money on it. But yeah, all the time I will read a book after um after the release date. Because it's a, it's yeah. There are, of course, changes. That's the whole point of them. But it's a, uh, it's a book. You know, it's pretty much the same thing. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> moving all these books on the floor is what's been exhausting me. I was fine standing up. Um, will I read more Sarah Jane Maas, aka upcoming Avatar and? Um, maybe. <laughs> you know, I like Sarah Jones. Like, I do, and I really liked the original A Court of Thorns and Roses trilogy. Um, but Throne of Glass is not my cup of tea. And, um, I just don't have a huge interest in, like, the other books. But I don't know much about Crescent City, but I would definitely consider reading it because I know that I do like Sarah Jane. Um, Give me one second, guys. Have to block someone. <laughs> it's always so annoying. Like, why are you putting spam on my video? Um. 
Um, what's the book you're the most proud or happy about owning? That's a good question. Um, probably the original UK Bloom Fairy editions of Harry Potter. Um, because they just add like so much to me to have. Um, because I had been like dreaming about having them since I was a kid. Because I just always thought they were like so beautiful and um, I thought they were beautiful and cool and like obsession with England. Like I wanted the English editions. And I thought that everything in England was superior. So um, yeah, finally buying them, what was it, last year, the end of last year, was a very exciting time for me. Um, and I definitely would say I'm the happiest about owning them, but of course I have like so many freaking cool editions of, so many cool editions of all my mortal instruments books. Like how can I not be excited about all of those? <laughs> Um, actually, on holiday, a couple of parts as I do this, because I'm like, oh my god, every time I go to my art shelf, I'm like trying to unhaul them, because I just have so many, <laughs> and I like really only want to keep either ones that I, like, haven't read and own, or like my favorite books, you know what I mean? So yeah. Um, if I were to pick an animal, 200% Michael, which animal would you choose and why? Um, maybe like a monkey, because Michael is like very energetic, and he's always fun to be around, and I feel like a monkey would be very fun to be around. Um, let's see, I'm on March of 2018. Let's see what other books have been on here. This is, this is the one confusing me about it, is it's very difficult to find the order of books on here. Let's see. And it's not September. Um, let's see. Shadow Game Book 3 title predictions. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Ace of Shades, King of Fools. Um, I'm assuming it's obvious it's going to be... Hmm. Ace, King, so it's probably Queen or Jack, I would assume. So I think maybe like Jack of something or Queen of something. I, I mean, those are probably the only two other iterations of it that would be like the equivalent of the beginning. <laughs> but as for the other one, Shades, Fools, um, I don't know. That's a really good question. I haven't really thought about it. Um, but yeah, so definitely, I, I'm feeling maybe Jack, because obviously Jack is a character, and I feel like maybe, you know, as his perspective is introduced in the last book, and maybe it's a sign that he will be more prominent in the last book. So it's a possibility. I don't go specifically like with all of the organizing. I'm not like super, super picky with, you know, the exact publication dates, but I do try and keep them as accurate as I possibly can. Let's see. Um, upcoming book show events here is pending. Honestly, nothing, which is so depressing because I want to go to book events. But I can't, um, can't find any of them, which makes no sense to me. Because like back in 2016, like there were always book events in New York City, and then all of a sudden they like stopped happening. Like there, you literally used to be a book in New York City like every week. I used to go in so much, and now there's nowhere near as many. But it makes me sad because I really miss going to book signings. It's so pretty. Sorry, y'all. There's some finagling going on down here. There we go. Um, let's see. Who's my favorite shadow hunter? Um, I mean, like, 
Jace is kind of a given, but I feel like Jace is like the obvious answer for me, so I'm wondering what I could give you that's not as obvious. Um, I'd say after Jace, my favorite child hunter is probably Emma. Um, but I just think that Emma is so strong and badass, and she really knows what she's doing. Um, she just trains so hard, and then I know that that's a depressing part of her character, but I've always really admired her for that. So if like we're going with the narrative that is in the storyline, that like Jace is the greatest shadow of this generation, like Emma is definitely right behind him. Mm. Why am I having so much trouble putting these in order? Just like sitting on about trying to organize. These books are almost done with the advanced reader copies, which is really exciting. Um, let's see what the next question is. Um, do you ever feel bad about putting your books on the bottom shelf? Um, no, because I like, I, I usually will put, like, books I don't care about on the very top or the very bottom, um, because they're the easiest, like, they're the hardest to see. When you walk right in the middle, right in the middle of the room, you're looking at the center of them. But I do like putting art specifically on the bottom, um, because I just like the way that it, like, lines my bookshelf. I think it's a fun running theme. Um, let's see what other. Let's see. I'm like very pleased with how this is all fitting because I feel like I'm like stacking them really nice together. Um, I still have so many books left. We're gonna be here for so long. Um, would I ever do a video where your friends or subscribers put into the art? Definitely, but probably not when I'm in school because I am a total mood reader and I always need to like read what I want to read. I, that's why like you don't ever see me doing like monthly TBRs. It's like very pick as I go. So I would do it if I had like the time to like dedicate um, my energy to reading books that I might not be super in the mood to read, if that makes sense. I feel like you guys can understand what I'm saying by that. <laughs> but yeah, definitely subscribers would be fun too. I wonder how you guys would like to organize that if I were to do that. Do you think that I should like do a poll on Twitter, on YouTube, Instagram polls? Like what do you think would be a good way for me to do that. Um, and now I have to grab more of my advanced reader copies because hopefully this is going to be the last action, which will be cool. Give me one second, y'all. I had to like shove all these off screen because there's so many books just hanging out on the floor everywhere. They're all falling. Uh, one book for each social media. That's a really good idea. I like that. Huh. Okay. Challenge accepted. Maybe I'll do it. Yeah, I've been wanting to do more um, social media focused videos. Like, I really want to do the one where, like, you guys, like, roast, like, I'll take a picture of my favorite books and you guys will, like, roast me on, like, in the Instagram questions option. I think that would be very funny. Um, so yeah, I have some ideas already. So let's see how I'm going to organize this bottom shelf. Um, we're nervous about college at first. Um, definitely because I um. Say. Uh, I was so anxious in high school. So I part of me was like excited at the prospect of um, you know having a fresh start and like not having all these fears about what other people you know thought about me. Um, so there was 
like something to that aspect, but I was definitely nervous about like the schoolwork and the social aspect and just like I mean y'all know how it is <laughs> if you're in college. Um let me see. I can't read the questions from here, so let me throw a few more on here. Um I might need to turn the AC up because it is hella, hella hot in here. <laughs> um, let's see, get my questions. A book I didn't expect to love. That's a really good question. Oh, and then how to manage school and books. A book I didn't expect to love. Huh. Trying. Let's see. Um, I'll say Six of Crows because it's just what I'm looking at at the moment. Um, Six of Crows was definitely a little out of my comfort zone because I did not read a ton of high fantasy back when. You know, six of had just come out and it was super hyped. So I was afraid that I would feel kind of lukewarm about it just because it like wasn't what I was, you know, reading, you know? Um yeah, that's one. Um I feel like a lot of them a lot of the books on here are like favorites of mine. So I might need to look on my other shelves. Um, that's a really good question. I might come back to that. Someone asked me that later. Um, someone asked me how to manage bookshoot in school, which is most definitely something I have experience with. And I, I do have a full video on um, like how to bookshoot with a busy schedule, which I think really has like all of my tips if you are interested. So check out that episode of Booktubing 101. Um, but planning in advance is definitely like the number one thing that I can say is helpful. Um, planning in advance, like making a schedule, like I have a whole binder where um, I have a calendar and I like write in the days I plan to upload certain videos and then I also have another sheet where I write down like the title of the video I'm doing and like a checklist of if I filmed it, if I've outlined it, if I've edited it, um, and like a target upload date. So like organizing stuff that way will allow you to be more on top of it so that you know what like you want to film next and, and when you're kind of uploading it. Um, using your time wisely is definitely like number one. Like for me in college, like sometimes I would have like a five hour break and that was like the prime time for me to uh, film videos because it was like, what else was I going to do when I had like a few hours, like I would eat lunch, I would come home, I would relax and I could film videos. Or else, you know, if you, you know that you do your homework from like 3 p.m. to like 5 p.m. and you eat dinner from 5 to 6, your friend filming time is probably 7 to 8 p.m. So just um, planning it out and being aware of the time that you have. And I think organizing it will allow you to set things up better so that you are like more able to, you know, be aware of this day I'm filming and this day I need to edit. Um, and of course, that's not like how everyone has to run their question channel. Like there's so many people out there that are just like, I'm just gonna film when I want to and edit when I want to and upload when I want to and like that's cool. Like that is that is how you do a book too, you know? I have no complaints. Um so yeah, just I'm like a very organized person and I like to really be on top of things, so that's how I conduct my channel. Um and it, it's worked for me for being in school, like just making use of the time I have to film and organizing things in advance has been very helpful. Um, I feel like I should leave this one open for when I start collecting more arts down there. If I can fit the rest of these in here, I don't know if I will. Let's see. I can fit all of these in here. Oh, I might actually have to go over 
for the interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go over by like two books. Alrighty, uh, so that is my arc shop with just three lonely little arcs down at the bottom there. <laughs> so that'll be open for business when I get to work on. Now I have no idea what to do next. <laughs> Um, I can say one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more on this shelf, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, six more on that shelf. Thirteen shelves to fill. Oh boy. Um, let's answer some questions before. I move on. Do you feel like you have to read The Grisha before Six of Crows? I don't think you have to. Um, I didn't. I read The Grisha Trilogy. I read Shadow and Bone, then I read both of Six of Crows, and then I finished the series. So it's not necessary to read, um, but if you want to get like the maximum, maximum experience, because there are a few crossovers at some points, you might want to read it first, but it's not required. Um, and a lot of people say to skip it because they like Six of Crows much better. <laughs> Let's see. Um, what do I think about readathons? Um, I love readathons. I just can't participate in them as much as I want to because I like to really dedicate myself to a readathon and like I want to be super invested in the community and I want to be reading a lot of books and participating in challenges. But I just it, my lifestyle is not sustainable to do it all the time. <laughs> um, but out of all the readathons I've participated in, I've had fun with all of them. Um, and I'm very excited for the upcoming Bibliothon. I haven't planned my TBR yet, but I'm really hoping to. Um, and I'll be vlogging it. Like, that's my favorite part of Readathons is definitely vlogging them. So if you are someone who's interested in participating in a Readathon, or if you are participating in a Readathon, you should definitely uh, vlog it and see where it goes, because I think it motivates you to read more. Hi, Brittany. I love you, and I'm so excited to host the Bibliothon with you very soon. Um, have I watched Stranger Things 3 yet? I have not. Um, I, I I do love Stranger Things and I'm excited to watch it. It's just, it just takes me a while to get around to TV. Am I planning on doing a new shelf tour after this? Yes. <laughs> so, um, I started filming a bookshelf tour in November. <laughs> November. Um, I filmed like one, two, three cases. Um, and then I filmed my advanced reader copies and like some of the, the shelf that's over here. Um, and then I just like started, and so first I wanted to get rid of all of all the these cases because they had my Christmas decorations on them and like it was January and I was like, I don't wanna have this up anymore. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna trash that. Then I was like, okay, let me like refill my advanced reader copies so that they're more updated and then I'll film some extra of the other shelf because I was moving things around. And so I just kept like brief filming as I was getting new books and organizing and I was like, this is so dumb. And then when my smaller shelf that was holding all my advanced reader copies broke and I was like, I'm gonna get another big one. Then I was like, let me just chill out and not worry about the bookshelf tour because I'm gonna rearrange everything. <laughs> so Hopefully, I will be filming it sometime soon. I just, I have no guarantees for when that's going to happen because your girl is in grad school. Um, let's see what I'm going to do next. Okay, so I'm thinking I can do like a dystopian sci-fi shelf here or I can do with thrillers. What do you guys think I should do? Dystopian sci-fi or thrillers? Um... Favorite psychological thriller? My favorite would probably be Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter because it's so creepy and gross and I love it. Do I have any bookish prints? I do. I have a whole wall of bookish prints. And if you search on YouTube Emma Books, um, if you search Emma Books bookish print wall, I think, um, you'll see a video where I put it together for the first time. But I have a lot of prints on it. Okay, um, a lot of you guys are saying thrillers, so I guess we're going to move my thriller shelf over. Um, I do want to kind of keep this case young adult, 
and middle grade, so I'm not going to move my adult brother shelf, but I'm going to move my uh, my young adult shelves uh, there. Um, how do I find out about bookish events? I have a whole video on that. <laughs> um, so yeah, you should definitely um, search uh, how to survive your next book signing. That's the video that I made. Uh, when I talk about it, but I'll give you a quick little rundown right now. So the first way is to check the events page on the website of your local bookstores. Um, pretty much any local bookstore is going to have an events page if they have events. Um, I'm thinking like the shop is smaller than that one. <laughs> um, so I have an events page, and so you can check there to see what um, authors are coming, what events they're having. That's a very reliable way. Number two is if you're looking to meet a specific author, or if you're looking to go to a specific book event, like if you want to go to BookCon next year, but you don't know when all the BookCon stuff is happening. Subscribe to their newsletter or the newsletter of your favorite author that you want to see um, because you will most definitely be able to find out about what events are happening there, which is pretty cool. Um, I wonder if you, this will, no, okay, that's not a good place to put it. I should definitely put this here. Um, so, yeah, that's another way. Bookish events. Um, what did I say? I said author newsletters, the newsletters of like bookish events, uh, and your local bookstore. Yeah, those are like the, the most reliable ways I would say that you could, um, learn how to find out about, uh, book events. Um, and I swear, I find those tips very useful. And that is how I find out about all of my book events that I go to. I'm actually having to downsize this um, shelf, which is interesting because I'm realizing that this shelf is actually smaller than this shelf too, which I did not know I did, but it's all good. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, did I read autobiography? Yes, I did. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Hold on. I have to block someone again. God. Um, I enjoyed autobiography. Um, oh, cool. I'll have some space for more to live on here, too. That's good. Maybe like, oh, cool. I feel like I should move these off of here because they aren't really... Or you know what, you can stay there for now. Um, I really enjoyed autobiography. It was a fun time. Um, yeah, I gave it like four and a half out of five stars, I think. It was good. Am I going to read the Unwind series? Yes, I am. I'm going to be reading it with the Paper Cut Book Club, which is Paperback Dreams, Read with Cindy and Jordan Harvey. Um, we're having a live show on July 21st. So you should read Unwind by Neil Schusterman and join us if you would like. But I'm very excited to uh, read it because I love Neil Schusterman. Uh, how many tattoos do I have? I have seven. And are they all book related? Nope. I have two that are not, one that is not book related. All righty. It is time to figure out what to do. With these next two shelves. <laughs> um, I'm feeling like I should do another contemporary. Some very sci fi. I don't know. <laughs> Who is my favorite uh, Harry Potter professor, McGonagall? I love Professor McGonagall. It's so funny, but also um, I feel like Professor Lupin would actually be number one. Because I feel like his class would be much more fun, whereas Mr. McGonagall is like a cool person, but she's a tough teacher. <laughs> um, okay, so let us do, let's do like my serious 
contemporary under no it's a big shelf so we'll do serious contemporary again. um will i participate in the reading rush i would really like to but i'm unfortunately not going to be able to this year because the week before i believe is the um by nova Lathan, which i'm hosting so i have to participate in that and i can't afford to do a readathon two weeks in a row i would just not get anything productive done but i'm very excited to see um everyone's progress for the reading rush i think what ariel and raylene are doing is really cool um so i definitely am excited to see everyone's like posts about it and whatnot it's going to be really cool um <sighs> all right um let's see how do i get over bad book hangovers um rereading a favorite is always a good one for me <laughs> um you know rereading books like harry potter the my instruments for me or i even have more now like renegades and size and holly chase that i would all reread rereading an old favorite is a really good way for me to get over book hangovers because it reignites my love of reading um so always enjoy doing that um sometimes like if you're like book hangover has turned into a book slump i would recommend um maybe taking a break from reading if that's something that you think you need to do because there's no sense forcing yourself to read it's not fun and you're not going to enjoy it so i don't recommend forcing yourself to read if you do not want to. Um, what can I do next? Trying to figure out how I want to stack these. Um, let's see. What's my favorite series out of the Shadow Hunter novels? I mean, of course it has to be um Immortal Instruments. Like, I don't think that's surprising. <laughs> um, I think everyone knows that the Mortal Instruments is my favorite series of all time. Um, but what I think the best series is might be a tie between Infernal Devices and the Dark Art Devices because I think that they are more complex and mature than the Mortal Instruments. I don't know how I want to organize this. <laughs> Um, let's see. Favorite INFJ characters? I don't know. That is like so much work. Like when people figure out people's um people's characters, they're Myers break type or the Enneagram type. I'm like, y'all are on a different level. That is so much effort that I like just do not have the patience for. <laughs> um I'm struggling, man. Who knew that putting books on shelves was so incredibly difficult? Um yeah. Yeah, here was a Hunger Games prequel. Yes, I did, and I'm so excited for it. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting book. Very excited for it. Um, I believe the rumor at the moment is that it's going to take place during Mags's um her what can I say her <laughs> her Hunger Games that's what I'm trying to think with the series um yeah so I've heard that that's who the character is going to be for the new one but we're not sure of course but um. Yeah, that would be really cool. And I would be super into that. Mm -hmm. 
figure out the best way to organize books. Yeah. Let's do that for now. I don't know if that makes sense today. That, yes. I love when I can get all my books a bit. <laughs> um, have I read any Sarah Dustin? I actually have not. I believe I have a Sarah Dustin book, but I have yet to read it. But I've heard really good things about Sarah Dustin books, so it's something I would like to give a try someday. Almost done with this shelf. That's pretty exciting. It's very weird to me how I can um, be like, like I, I don't believe I've taken any books off of this shelf from when I moved it over there, but there's like more space over here. It like doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> oh, I have another one that actually fits on the shelf pretty good. Let's see there. Awesome. Um, I have no idea what to do with the rest of these. <laughs> okay, should this be a fantasy or a contemporary shelf? That is the question. That is the question. Um, let's see. If I could choose three books to have everyone own, which they would choose? That's a really good question. Um, ooh. Um, I haven't read Michelle Obama's uh, memoir, but can I choose that one? Because I'd really like to read her memoir. <laughs> and I just feel like everyone could benefit from it. Um, Harry Potter, because I feel like absolutely... Okay, everyone is saying fantasy. It's going to be a fantasy show. Um, I feel like everyone could benefit from Harry Potter. Like, it's just a fun story. Um, and... Third book. Um... Scythe was very thought-provoking, so maybe Scythe. I feel like Scythe would be... No, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Everyone has to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That is my answer. Okay, um... So, for this next fantasy show, it used to be my vampire show. <laughs> There's a lot of vampire books, but it's not only vampire books. So I don't know the best way to handle it. Hmm. Let us see. I have so many vampire books. Oh, I gotta leave space for, um, what is it, The Beautiful by Renee Appiah. Gotta leave some space for that. What is it? Coming out, and I'm so excited for it. Okay, so this will be my new vampire show that I don't think I can just leave as plain vampires <laughs> because I just feel like I just don't have enough. But I do have quite a few vampire books. I love a good vampire book. Everyone suddenly decided that they were lame, and I disagree. Um, top three vampire books. Um, I mean, listen, I don't know how much my taste counts here, because most of the vampire books I read, I read when I was like a teenager. And teenage Emma and adult Emma have some of the same taste, but not all of the same taste. So I can't say for sure if I would recommend all of these now, but, um, oh, I can't fit all my Twilight graphic novels here. That's frustrating. Um, um, The Chronicles of Lad Todd is a great, oh, no, that's Young Adult. I was like, is that Young Adult? No, or is that Mo Green? But I love The Chronicles of Lad Todd. Um, Vampire Academy, of course, which I have in my hands right now, because I would love me some Vampire Academy. Um... Bloodlines was also a good series. It was like somehow like the level of trashy of Empire County would also a little bit more mature, which I don't 
fully understand. But it was a good time. Um, okay, maybe I will just make this an empire shelf because it appears that like this, this is a pretty full shelf. And if I get more vampire books, then that's where they can go. Do I have any more vampire books? I don't think so. Is and no, and I Darkin is not a vampire book. It's just inspired by one of these. It's not a vampire. I do also need to finish getting the Bloodline series. That is like one series I haven't finished uh, picking up, so I do need to finish that. Series. Alrighty, I'm also going to turn my AC up a little bit. Because it's hot in here, I'm sorry. That's better. Okay. Um, is the Empire Academy series worth it? I think so. If you, like, okay, it's not, like, the best writing in the world. <laughs> I love it. Like, I love that series so much. But it's not the best um, writing-wise. And there's definitely some elements that are probably problematic because every – Book that was written in like 2007 was problematic um but i really loved it and if you're someone that like loves that old school by paranormal vampires like swoony almost like forbidden romance and whatnot like it's fun for that so you definitely have to go into it expecting something specific <laughs> um okay i think i should do another Let's start with dystopian, and then we'll see if it turns into a sci-fi and dystopian show. Probably because of the size of it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sometimes I feel like I have so many shelves and books left, and other times I'm like, oh my god, we're going to be done soon. So, not really sure. Okay. Well, I know that we're doing the Inner Chronicles on this shelf. Um, let's see. Team Edward or Team Jacob? I was always Team Edward. Team Edward through and through. No, actually, I was not always Team Edward. I'm a liar. I was Team Jacob uh, when the movies came out. Of course, because everyone became Team Jacob when the movies came out. But in the books, I was always Team Edward. Um, do I worry about warping my shelves? I mean, I know that my shelves get warped. Um, you know, these aren't like the most high quality shelves in the world, so I know what I'm paying for with them. Um, but yeah, I would say I'm pretty pretty aware that they do work, um, and it's a shame. But I, I do try, like I don't, I won't shove them intentionally unless I like don't have any more space whatsoever. Um. Edward was kind of depressing, though. You're not wrong. <laughs> you are very, very true. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Am I interested in reading the Foxhole Port? I would. Um, I don't know when. That's like the thing about all of these. Um, what am I saying? Like, it's all these series. I'm like, yeah, I would love to read it, but if I will, it is another. I really don't know how to best organize the shelf. Part of me wants to leave it a sci-fi and just move on, like make a different dystopian shelf. Um, let's see. Oh, okay, I can definitely do this as a sci-fi shelf. I'm figuring things out as we go, guys. <laughs> Um, how many books do I think I have on my TBR? Hundreds. Like, I don't, if you mean TBR in like books that I own that I haven't read, hundreds for sure. Um, and if you're talking about books I'm interested in that like I would like to read at some point, like endless, endless books. But I feel like my TBR is like, a, like what I consider like my TBR is a combination of the two. It's some of the books that I own that I haven't read, and some books that I don't own that I'd like to read. But then there are other books that like I own, and they're like very far down to where I like don't consider them my TBR really. So that's an interesting fact. Um,
The line between dystopian and uh, the line between dystopian and sci-fi is like so narrow, and I never know if I'm like making the right decision. <laughs> oh, I have to do um, wires in here as well. It's very important sci-fi. Uh, books that left the biggest smile on my face, Nevermore, that's a great one. Um, if you are a Harry Potter fan, like why haven't you read Nevermore? Because it's the perfect like book to accompany Harry Potter. Obviously nothing can replace Harry Potter, but it gave me like the same feelings, like similar feelings to when I first read Harry Potter. Um, and it's like so good. It's like a fantasy about a girl who believes that she's cursed and then she is like entered into this competition to win a place in this wondrous society. And it is like so freaking dope. And more people should read it. Let's see. I don't know if this is considered dystopian or sci fi. Let's put that with dystopian. Not sure anymore. Should I read Vampire Academy? Um, you know, I started this thing <laughs> where I say, if you think it's your cup of tea, then you should read it. Because, like, I recognize that I really like Vampire Academy, but I don't think everyone who would read Vampire Academy would like Vampire Academy. <laughs> so it's definitely... I got pick and choose type thing. Um, but I think that if you believe that you would enjoy it, you should get it. Um, oh, I'm almost done here. I don't know. Hold on. Let me ask you this question. The Young Elites. Is this a sci-fi or a dystopian series? Because I honestly don't know. And I feel like it's one of those ones that overlaps between the two. Will I read the modern fairy tales from Holly Black? Um, I want to. I have them. I have the modern fairy tale series. But I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Um, but when I'm like in the mood for like an old school, um, an old school like paranormal YA. Okay, everyone's saying it's dystopian, so thank you. Um, when I'm feeling that old school YA paranormal feel, I'm definitely going to pick it up. Okay, since um, you guys were so quick to answer that, is more than this sci-fi or dystopian as well? Because that's another one that I'm not really sure about, but I feel like it could be an either. So I need your input. Dystopian as well? Okay. See, this is why it's so helpful for me to organize them with you guys on live because then when I don't have the knowledge to help me with my bookshop, you guys can answer. Um, I do need to find a place to put my Darkest Times DVD. Am I going to read um, Obsidio? I would like to, but as you can see, I don't own it yet. So I would need to get myself a copy first, or I might listen to the audiobook. I do have the audiobook saved on Scribd, but it's just like when I get to read it. <laughs> All right, um, let us, okay, I think that's it for that sci-fi show. So now I have three more shelves that I can fit under here. Um, I'm thinking it's time to do another contemporary. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, all right, let's do another contemporary. What psychology courses have you taken? I've taken a lot of psychology courses. Um, let's that that way. Um, I took psychology, ooh, let me grab my water before I sit down to do these shelves. All right. Um, let me figure out what shelf I am doing next in the first place, though. <laughs> One 
Uh, what's the college courses that I took? So I took general psych in high school. Um, then I took abnormal psych, which is like sort of like psychopathology. It's all about the different um, mental disorders that exist in the world. Um, then I had um, developmental psychology, which is like psychology through the lifespan. I also took clinical counseling. Um, I took, which is like what I'm like mainly studying now. I also took adolescent psychology, so it's like the psychology focused on adolescence. I took personality psych, which is all about different personalities, um, personality tests, um, the different, you know, the different ways that personality influences our life. I took, no, not just three more. I have these shelves, and then I also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven open that I can play with when I finish these shelves. Um, okay, psychology classes. I also took psych assessment, which is learning about all the different types of, um, all of the different types of, <laughs> like why can't I think? Um, the different types of assessments and evaluations and like psychological tests that there are. I also took, I took so many psych classes. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. I took Creativity of Psychology, which is one of my favorite courses. I took something called Colloquium, which was essentially we met like three times during the semester and for the rest of the semester, I had to attend like professional psychology events, um, like workshops and classes and such. Um, so that was cool to like get my first experience in the field. Um, I didn't have to do an internship because I took a different type of class, which was called Leads, and it was like specifically about community development on Long Island, which was kind of weird, <laughs> but it was, I didn't want to dedicate the time to doing an internship in undergrad, and I was like, no thank you. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to block people again. <laughs> um, and I took so many psychology courses, I can't remember. Can't remember. I took a lot. I mean, that's a pretty good representation of most of the ones I took. Oh, I took so many research classes too. I took like three classes on how to conduct psychological research. Um, and then also senior seminar, which was kind of weird. It was like a mixture of career development and like learning how to like get jobs and like resume stuff. And then the other half of it, we literally like just did a fundraiser. Um, so I raised, my group and I, we raised uh, $400 for Hurricane Maria relief and we bought supplies and, set, and dropped it off at a facility that would ship it directly to Puerto Rico to help those who are affected by it. Um, and we managed to raise the most money in our class, which was pretty cool. Um, so that was also a cool experience, but it definitely was like weird to be like my final big <laughs> um, class for college. Now I have to figure out what I want to do with all of these books. <laughs> Advice for subscribers about to start college. Join a club. Oh my goodness, for the love of God, join a club. Join multiple clubs. Um, yeah, clubs are really important because it's the best way for you to make friends. I'm not kidding. Um, a lot of people, like, think that clubs are dumb, are weird, and are not. It's literally, like, you get to interact with people who already have the same interests as you. So when you're trying to make friends, there's no, like, beginning awkward small talks because you can dive right into talking about, like, books or art or anime or whatever it is that you're in clubs for. Um... So yeah, that's a really good thing that I recommend. Um, I also would recommend, what else can I recommend to you guys about starting college? I have a whole video on like a college Q&A um, that I would recommend checking out if you 
are interested because that will answer pretty much all the questions that people have about like time management and whatnot. Um, other things that I recommend for college is to like make sure you show up and do your work. Like I don't understand people who just like don't go to class and like obviously like I understand like having like medical issues or mental health issues and like not being able to go to class for that, but like just being lazy and not wanting I mean lazy isn't a nice word for me to use, but just like not wanting to go and being like, yeah, I'm just gonna like skive off class, it doesn't matter. I'm like you're paying you so much money. So do your homework and go to your classes and get your money's work. Um, I mean, if you like are somewhere where they have free college, maybe you don't have to worry about that as much, which would be awesome. And I wish I had your life. But for the rest of us, most of us should go to college and get our money's work before attending it. Um, trying to think. Um, what other things? College. Someone asked me for my favorite coffee drink, and the answer is none because I hate coffee. <laughs> Let me grab some more books over here. Um, favorite ghost of the Shadow Market story. My favorite is a tie between. Um, the Wicked Ones, which is an amazing story about Celine Montclair, I believe, is her full name in the story. Um, and then I also just absolutely adored um, Every Tuesday Thing, which follows Anna Lightwood. And it's such a freaking good story. <laughs> um, just trying to figure out the best way for me to organize this is. Um, want to display that book so bad. I think I'm on to something here. Um, let's see. Girl, why don't you like coffee? Because it tastes nasty. Like, no one ever said, wow, I love the taste of coffee the first time drink it. It just doesn't happen. So like why would I continue to drink something that doesn't taste good to me? Not my cup of tea personally. <laughs> um I'm trying to find the best way for me to organize this show. Awesome. Um, let's see. Do you think Bookham will ever come back to Chicago? Um, I feel like I've heard that they might be moving again, but I'm not sure, so do not quote me on it. But to my knowledge, um, they don't want to, and the reason that they even went to Chicago in the first place is because, like, they were doing construction at, um, the New York City Convention Center, and like they needed to find somewhere else to do it, but it's like very costly for publishers to do Book Expo outside of New York because then they have to buy all their employees out. Whereas the majority of publishing places are already in New York, so like why wouldn't they just do it where they could all stay home? So that's probably that's like why it's not um, it's always in New York, and while it, why it will most likely stay in New York, but they might move it again if they have a reason to, you know. Nothing is ever set in stone. Um, trying to figure out the best way for me to organize all this. There's so many good books here, but I don't know the best way to organize them. This shelf is stuffed, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. Any questions? Um, what's my favorite part about book time? Oh, I love so many parts about book time. Um, I, of course, love being able to oh, see my friends all the time. That's like an amazing part of it. 
Um, I think I'll do another contemporary right here because I just had this one is like overflowing, so I think I need to do there. Wow. I feel like I'm like setting up such an awkward position right now. I apologize. <laughs> I'm just trying to be comfy. Um, okay. Things that I love about BookCon. So I love seeing my friends. Um, I absolutely love meeting anyone who watches my videos. It makes me so happy anytime someone comes up to me and says that they watch my videos or that they have read books because of me. It is the coolest thing in the entire world. Um, so I just love being able to meet everyone at BookCon. Um, I don't get to see authors a lot during BookCon. Not by choice, really. I would love to meet more authors and stuff. But um, because I go as press every year, meaning I don't pay for it in exchange for me posting about it on social media, um, I don't have access to the lottery. So I, the only time I can see authors at BookCon is panels. And I haven't been going to panels a lot in the past, but I went to a couple this year, as you'll see in my BookCon vlog from this year. So that was really cool. So I really enjoyed going to panels more this year. Um, and I would love to go to more signings. It's just I don't have access to them. But I'm not complaining, obviously. Um, where do I put my books when there's no space left on your bookshelf? It hasn't occurred in a while. <laughs> um, I've been very lucky to have some decent bookshelf space. But if I do have, a, like, they don't fit somewhere, I will just stack them up on my floor until I can find some place to put them, whether that's taking books off of my shelf and getting rid of them and donating them, or else if I buy another bookshelf. <laughs> Um, I do have to say though, like these bookshelves are looking pretty good. Like those are those are some sexy, sexy shelves, my friends. <laughs> uh, should I read Sound Husbands of Evelyn Hugo first or Daisy Jones first? Tough question. Um, I would recommend Evelyn just because it is written in a normal narrative format, whereas Daisy Jones is an oral history, so Daisy Jones is like all dialogue. So it's a jarring experience for some people, and it's caused some people to not like Daisy Jones as much, but I really recommend Evelyn Hugo, and I just feel like it's a book that is super applicable to many different reading tastes, because um, I'm someone who obviously reads mostly YA, and I know that a lot of you guys read YA, obviously, as <laughs> that's mostly what I'm talking about on my channel. Um, so I think if you read a lot of, like, YA, or if you read a lot of like adult, like it, it, it's a good merger book between the various genres. Um, okay, let's do my next show. Um, have I heard of The Only Woman in the Room? It sounds so much like Evelyn Hugo. I have not, but it, that sounds like an interesting title, and I would like to check it out here. Where do I listen to audiobooks? I love talking about audiobooks, so I'm very excited for this question. Um, I love to listen to audiobooks. Um, I listen to them. My first spot is a library. Um, if you did not know, the library or your local library um, may very well have access to a digital collection that you can access using your library card. So you can download an app um, that your library has, like, made an agreement that they're going to like work with um you know like that they say that they're a part of it. so like go into your library ask if they have a digital collection find out what apps they use um some that you might hear of are overdrive maybe hoopla there's a lot of them and there's ones even for different countries so it's not exclusive to america so go into your local library or call them email them and ask them if they have a way for you to access the digital collection um so i rent books on there a lot that's like my number one place to look because I like supporting my library and I don't like checking out libraries books from the library because I have so many books and like I feel bad taking a book away from someone who doesn't have the ability to buy a book so I'm like I'd rather read the physical books I own and buy my own books and then I will either read ebooks from my library or I will listen to audiobooks from them so it's like the way I'm comfortable supporting them. Um, and then I also listen to audiobooks on, um, where else do I listen to audiobooks? I listen to audiobooks on Scribd, um, which is an app that you can download and it gives you access to, ooh, um, I'm trying to think of the 
which way I should organize this because I'm like one book short <laughs> for what I'm trying to organize them like. Okay. Um I'm all good. My third one is an audiobooks is Audible. <laughs> um so Audible is obviously a subscription service it's like Scribd. Um, whereas Scribd, like you stream them online, that's how you listen to the books. Um, with Audible, you buy them, you purchase them, and they're just a key. I think both are really good. I use both regularly. Um, Scribd is like ten dollars a month, eight dollars a month, and Audible is fifteen. Um, and if you're someone who listens to a lot of audiobooks or ebooks, because Scribd you can access ebooks there too. Um, I think it is really, really worth it to uh, get both if you want both. If you had to choose one, if you can afford Audible, I recommend Audible just because um, the selection is bigger. So it's like, you know, you're paying for what it's worth. Um, so we have one more shelf here, and I think I'm going to make it my middle grade shelf. Um, and I'm going to use this bottom one for art. And then we're done with this case. Oh my goodness. And I have to move on to the other one, which will, I think will go pretty quickly because I only have like maybe three or four more shelves to fill in hot space. So that's pretty cool. Awesome. Let's check out more questions. Oh my gosh. Shout out to any of you who have been here for the full two hours that we've been doing this because oh my goodness. Hmm. Favorite book by Adam Silvera. Um. I have to say history is all you left me just because I think history is like so amazing. Like, oh my God, it is a really well-rounded story, super developed. The characters are so multifaceted and I really like the dynamics and the interesting relationships between everyone. Um, if you haven't read history is all you left me, it's about a boy whose ex-boyfriend dies in a tragic accident and he ends up meeting his ex-boyfriend's like boyfriend he was dating when he died and they spend some time together because they're the only two people who like know what each other are going through because they dated the same person and it's just a really wild story with so many plot twists and it's just it's really well written um my second favorite would have to be Fable Thivian because that one was like equal it was equal part sad and fun it was very adventurous but very emotional um well, I don't know about Between More Happy Than Not and What If It's Us. Those are books that I read at very different points in my life and with very different reading tastes. So I don't know how I could compare them, but I gave them, each of them four stars. So maybe you can say they're like a tie for third place. <laughs> have I read My Lady Jane? I have not, but I would like to. Um, people say it's really funny. Um, and I love a good funny book. <laughs> um... What would I like to specialize in as a mental health counselor? Um, I really want to specialize in eating disorders. Uh, that's kind of my thing. So that would be my goal to specialize. Um, I have a couple other written down somewhere, like in a book, <laughs> but I can't remember off the top of my head. But there's definitely quite a few specializations and certifications that I would like to get. Um, hopefully I will once I graduate. Do I watch Stranger Things? I do. Um, I watched both seasons, um, and I would like to watch season three sometime soon. But I just haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> Favorite author besides Cassandra Clare? Um, that's a good question. I love Marissa Meyer. I really do. I've read so much of her work, and like I've yet to be disappointed. So I really love her. Um, I haven't read so much Victoria Schwab, but what I read from her I really love. Um, I read a ton of Holly Black. Love me some Holly Black. Um, who else over here? Um, I'm trying to think of like authors that have like a ton of ton of works. Um, oh, and I'm a big fan of Neil Schusterman too. I am so, so, so big on Neil Schusterman. Love that man. Um, so, yeah. Um, advice for when you're on the cusp of a reading slump. Identify why you are going through a reading slump. Because there's, there's quite a few reasons for why you could be going through a reading slump. You could be going through a difficult time in life, like I was last week. Um, and I 
did not read a lot at all and I actually did enough to book just because I was in uh, like a bad mental space and I couldn't focus on reading. So I did enough the book I was reading because I was like, I know that there's no way I'm going to make it through this when I'm reading like this. So that was my first step was doing that in that book. Um, but identifying why you are going to read some because if it's like the book that you're not reading, if it's like the book that you're reading, you're just not in the mood for it, it's not connecting with you. DNF it, like don't finish it. Why are you reading something that you're not enjoying? Um, and it also doesn't have to mean that you're not enjoying it, it just means that you aren't, um, you know, reading it in the, what am I trying to say? You're not reading the book that you want to be reading at the moment and it's making you not want to read. So instead pick up something that you're excited about. And you can always go back to the book later. It doesn't mean it's a bad book just because you decide to stop reading it. Um, so yeah. Identify why and take the appropriate actions. You know, sometimes it's a reading break, sometimes it's changing what you're reading, sometimes it's rereading an old book and you just need to like feel that passion for reading again. Um, I'm going to display two of these books. There's so much extra space on here now that I moved. Um, now that I moved some little good books up there. Um, what, no, you know what, I'm going to move the Prosper Retina books down here because I just feel like they fit with these books better than those books. Up there. So that is what we're going to do. And then this shelf is officially done. How exciting is that? Let me see if I can give you like a full shot of all of them. Oh my God, it looks so fun. I'm gonna scream. I'm so excited. Let me see. I'll give you a big shot and then we can start up on my other shelf. Wow. Don't she look beautiful? I'm very, very happy with it. This is like exactly what I have been wanting my bookshelves to look like. So I'm super pumped about it. Okay, so now let's move you over to this side. Welcome to my other shelf that people don't know that I have. <laughs> because I don't show it much. <laughs> so yeah, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shelves free. Seven oh my god. Um, okay, so I have a couple contemporary books, a couple fantasy, and a couple dystopian. So I think, okay, what I think I'm going to do for now, I'm going to leave this shelf open because I just don't know what's going to go there, you know? Um, so we're going to leave that open for now. And this is, oh, this is my adult psychological thriller shelf that I really like the way it looks. And I like having it on this shelf because I consider this big bookcase to be like my favorite. It's the one I film in front of all the time. And so this almost feels like my reject shelf sometimes, even though it's not because I have so many other favorites on here. But um, I just needed, I need something to like draw the attention, you know? So I'm keeping that shelf there. Um, my question is, next to the thriller shelf, should this be fantasy, dystopian, or contemporary? That's for you guys to answer. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, can we say hi, Tiana? Hi, Tiana. <laughs> Let's see what other questions. Yes, the Six of Crows audiobook is so freaking good. The Six of Crows audiobook, I highly recommend. It's a full cast recording. Um, so... Highly recommend. Will I ever do a room tour? Yes, I'm actually doing a room tour and it's coming very soon. Um, sometime in August, I believe it'll be up and I'm super, super pumped to share it with you guys because I just love how my room is. Okay, I feel like dystopian is winning. So this is where my new dystopian shop is going to go. Um, let's move leftover contemporary. They're not even contemporary, they're horror, but I just don't know where to put them. Um, let's see what other questions y'all have. Um, do I ever get recognized for your videos in college classes? So I haven't had 
like a classmate tell me that like they watch my videos and like, they know who I am. But I have had um, people from like high school and even people I know from college say that their siblings watch me, which is always really interesting. Um, so that's a fun time. Um, let's see. I like really want to change up because I feel like I've been doing my dystopian shelves like the same way for the longest time. So I wonder do a selection in the middle. Hunger games up here. Let's see other questions. Your bookshelves are my favorite, so pretty thank you so much. <laughs> I clearly put a lot of effort into them as we've been here for two hours. <laughs> um Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love how, like, literally just all the white books that were done on one of there. Um, let's see, I wonder if I can fit. Oh, wait, no, I don't know if I want to. Let's see if I do this. Oh my gosh! Well, that's the first time I dropped books during this bookshelf reorganization, so that's a pretty positive thing. Could be worse. <laughs> Let's see. Um, have you ever watched Superstore? I haven't, um, but I know people who have, and they really enjoy it. So maybe I should get to that at some point or another. Who's my favorite contemporary author? Um, I love Nisi Adam Silvera, as we discussed before. Uh, Adam is great. There's so many great books. I love all of them. Highly recommend. Um, let's see. I also love Amber Sin's books. She is uh, a more new to me author. Um, but I really enjoy her stuff. And then I also really love, um, who else do I love? The contemporary authors. I, I, I when I give like recommendations for like favorite authors in the genre, I like to be able to have said I've read like a couple of their works. Um, Becky over Tally too. I've read two Becky, three three Becky books, and I really enjoyed them. So also Becky. Um, I'm trying to think of anyone else. I like. I mean, I've only read one book from Katie Henry, but I really enjoyed it. So that could be uh, another one for sure. Let's display the Hunger Games in honor of the new book coming out. Hell yeah. And we'll stack these on top. And then that's my, oh, this took a job. Sweet, wow. It feels so cool to finally have dystopian and sci-fi and fantasy like all separated properly because it's been so long. But actually, you've done it properly. All righty, I say let's do contemporary here. Yeah, maybe contemporary there. And then, oh wait, there's two more. <laughs> there's two more. Oh no, there's three more dystopian books. What am I gonna do? Where are they all gonna fit? All righty, let's see how. Okay, she stuffed. She stuffed like real good. But <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks so stuffed. That's ridiculous. Um, I don't know how I'm feeling about this organization because Relu does have a new book coming out soon, and I'm going to have to do it differently. I wonder if I can put. No, none of these are sci-fi. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little stumped here. Let's leave that alone for a minute. Because I can come back to it. The main thing is that they're all on the shelf, so. <laughs> um, if I moved your reading nook, you could fit like three full-size bookshelves. I know I could, but I like having my couch there. Um, this is my reading nook for anyone who isn't familiar. That's my bookish print wall right there. And then those are some pictures from like book events and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, I could move in and fit more bookshelves, but I, I really like having the couch there because otherwise there's like nowhere for my friends to sit in this room when they come over. And also that's like the chair where I put all of my um, clean laundry <laughs> before I put it away. So it is very convenient for me to keep that open there. How did I get into BookTube? Um, I first got into BookTube because uh, and I know friends my senior year of high school. Basically, all of my friends had moved away, and they, um, all my friends had moved away, and um, I got really into reading as a way to cope with it. But I had no friends to talk about books with, <laughs> so I ended up getting really into, um, you know, the Mortal Instruments. I was already big on Harry Potter, and also, I got into, um, what else, uh, The Hunger Games, and then that was the time I discovered um, BookTube. Basically, I one day was just, like, scrolling on, um, like, YouTube. I was just watching videos, and I stumbled upon these people who were talking about the different ways that they pronounce things in the Mortal Instruments series. And I love that so much. <laughs> and I was like, I want to make a video like that. So I did. <laughs> and I made a couple other booktube videos. But that is how I got into booktube. Um, I basically just discovered it. And I was like, I want to do that too, because I have no other people to talk about books with. And what do you know, it turned out really good in my favor. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a pretty cool thing that came about from, uh, from just wanting to do something that made me happy. Let's see what other books I get to go Here. I really love the cover of A Camp of Better, so I'm like, I have to display it on my shelves. Um, gotta add a yeah, I also have literally nowhere to put the Dylan's Guide to My Summer 2 because um, I just don't read any historical fiction, so I don't have a place to put it. Um, so yeah, that's where it's going to go for now. And I have these three books to find a place to put on here. Um, I see what's to do things here. And let's do American Girls. Uh, I don't want to do any. Yeah, I don't know. Under there. Awesome. So that's my next contemporary shelf. Sorry, I had to get a little focused on there. Um, let's see what other questions you guys have. Can you tell us your favorite books on your thriller shelf? Um, so this is my adult psychological thriller shelf. Uh, my favorite would be night film. Um, I still love The Woman in the Window, but I feel very conflicted about it after that article about the author. <laughs> Um, I love Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I Adored You by Caroline Kepnes. Um, and I really like Farm Girl. And those are probably my favorites that are on here. Uh, there's a couple more that I want to read. I have read a couple that are really good. But yeah. So I'm thinking of making this another contemporary shelf. But I just don't have any other contemporary books other than these horror books. Uh, which is the Merciless series by Danielle Pita. So I think what I'm going to do is snap that right there. That's going to be my next contemporary shelf. Uh, and I do have some space on another contemporary shelf down there. So then I just have to divide these books up into three fantasy shelves. Or four. Okay. So I'll leave this one open and we'll do one, two fantasy shelves, maybe three. And then I'm all done. Oh my goodness. This is wild. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me throughout this whole thing because 
Wow, <laughs> it's taking me a while. Um, what standalone do you wish I had a spin off for? That's such a good question because there's so many. Um, you know, it's tough because there are standalones that like you, there are standalones that like you want more of just because you love the story so much, but maybe they don't necessarily need a sequel. And then there are other ones where you're like, I need more. <laughs> so like for a standalone that like I just want more to because I love it is <laughs> the afterlife of Holly Chase, but I do feel like that story is completed. Um, a book that I wish had a sequel might be The List by Patricia Ford, which is a middle grade book. And I actually like disliked more and more as I finished it. But I feel like it really needed <laughs> um, a sequel. I like, didn't understand why it didn't have a sequel. So I would be more satisfied if it did. Um, also, like my, my go-to answer for this is because I answered this question as a tag many, many years ago. And like it's always my go-to answer for this. And it's The Cold Scrolling Cold Town by Holly Black, which is an amazing fantasy standalone about vampires. I'd highly recommend you read it. But it ends on like kind of a cliffhanger and it just feels like there's more of a story to be told and there was never a sequel written. <laughs> so I would really like to um, read that, you know, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, you know what? I think I'm going to move a few books off of one of my fantasy shelves over there and put them on here so that I have more space on this one. That's the tough thing about reorganizing bookshelves is that as much as you want to stuff them all in so your shelves look packed and wonderful. <laughs> my tarot cards just fell off my uh my bookshelf. Don't know how that happened. Um what was I saying? Like you want to have your bookshelves look full and like all of your books are like perfectly spaced down on it. But if you're going to be getting more books, you need to have space for it. So I just added a little bit of space to that paranormal shelf over here, and I'm just going to move this series, this paranormal one over here. So let's move to this shelf. And then we'll focus on these two fantasies. So I think I'm going to do a paranormal fantasy here and a high fantasy here. Um, let's see, what are the questions? Have I seen the hand on the walls cover? I have, and I'm so excited to read it. My best friend is the marketing director on um, Warren Johnson's uh, True the Three series, and I bug him every single day. I'm like, when are you going to give me the sequel? When are you going to give me the third book? When are you going to give me the third book? Because I want to read it so bad. <laughs> um, pile some more books on here. What other? See, I'm like trying to also go with like vibe, you know. Like I feel like these books all right here have a similar vibe. Um, see, will I read Stephen King? Um, I would like to someday. I just have no distinct plans for when that would happen. <laughs> um, I, I would like to though because I know that so many people love Stephen King. Um, and he's a really accomplished author, like everyone I know loves him. Oh, I said I wanted to do this one, the Urban Fantasy, didn't I? I did. Oh, let's see. Um, what am I going to do after I finish this live show? Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom because the girl really has to go. <laughs> but I do have to, like, I'm committed to finishing this one. So actually like so in love with how it's turning out and I'm having so much fun so like I will do that when the time comes um my sister invited me to go out with her later tonight if she goes out with her friends so I might be doing that um I could do some preparing for the bibliothon so I'm gonna be filming my post video on Sunday uh and it's gonna be really funny I hope you guys are excited for it um so yeah I could do that um or I might just like Fuck around and be lazy for until I go to bed. <laughs> Who knows? The night is my oyster. Um, oh, I probably might take some photos of my bookshelves because I just I think they look really pretty and I'm very happy with the way that they're coming out. And I'm also so pleased 
that you guys helped me make decisions on where things should go because I think it looks so good right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's what I will probably do after. I'm not. I don't have any specific plans. I work all day tomorrow, um, and to, I'm not sure if tomorrow after work if I'm going to film because I would like to film some videos, or if I'm going to go to the gym because if I go to the gym, then I have to uh, get ready after. And uh, the gym, like I love going to the gym because I like living a physically fit lifestyle, but it also just takes so much time because you also have to factor in, like not only do you have to factor in the workout, but you have to factor in like showering afterwards and then getting ready. So it's a big day disruptor sometimes. <laughs> um, oh, wait. Let's finish this up because I'm so close to being done. I literally think I have like three shelves left, which is pretty dang cool. Um, oh, I have some like, oh, okay, hold on. I'm like trying to figure stuff out as we're, <laughs> I'm like, hmm, this is kind of horror and this is kind of urban fantasy. So I'm just trying to think of the best way to organize these. So let's finish my urban fantasy first. I feel like that's what I should be focusing on right now. Um, let's see, did I ever do any sports in high school? Not in high school. I um, was on track in element in middle school. I was pretty good there, I did the hurdles. Um, I've been dancing for like ever. Um, what else have I been doing? Uh, and I played Quidditch for a semester in college. Um, I've never been a big sports person. I've never particularly been good at sports. <laughs> um, but dancing has always been my thing. And now I do pole as well, which is pretty dang cool. Um, okay, so I think I can say that this shelf is pretty done. It's not my favorite. But that's why, like, this shelf, like, when I get down to it, um, like, this is kind of, like, all the books that, like, are, like, my favorite favorites that I want to on that shelf. So I kind of just have to deal with them not having my most favorite, um, look in the world. Oh, I could, you know what always does make me, um, feel better about a shelf is putting out the face, like, a cover. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I love the cover. Ooh, do I want to do, okay. Tell me which cover do I face out? Do I face out the Devouring Grade or Undead Girl Game? So you tell me which one I should face outward. And that will be how I make myself feel better about the shelf. Because every single time, it makes me happier. Okay. Oh, it's so tied. <laughs> Let me see. I'm going to organize this real quick before I check to see which one you guys think I should face outward. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, most of you are saying the devouring grade, so we shall do the devouring grade. <laughs> Aw, that does look nice. See, literally, whenever you face a book outward, it just makes the shelf look better to me. All right, so I have two shelves left. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, what do you think is the best Karen Slaughter book? I have only read two Karen Slaughter books, but my favorite between the two is Pretty Girls. Um, it is very gory and gross, but I really like it. <laughs> um, am I going to do a Ghost of the Shadow Market spoiler review? Maybe, probably not anytime soon. I would definitely need to reread all of them. Um, because I started reading them as they were being electronically published a year ago, and I just don't think I could give a full spoiler free review based on how long it's been. But I would like to go back um, and finish them. Will you please give another chance to the Throne Glass series? I have given two chances, y'all. That is so much more than I give so many books. <laughs> um, maybe one day. <laughs> maybe one day. But for now, I'm pretty okay with, like, not continuing with Throne of Glass. But I, I would read more Sarah G. Mass, like, Crescent City. That's coming out soon, so maybe that is what 
I will um, pick up soon. So this is going to be like a high fantasy slap. Ooh, passenger is con is passenger considered fantasy or sci-fi? Because it's time travel. Is passenger technically sci-fi or fantasy? I can't decide. <gasps> Um, oh my god, Kitty Cat, thank you so much for the donation. Um, are you doing any more weekly reading vlogs? I will be doing one for the Buying a Bibliothon, so you will definitely get a readathon focused weekly reading vlog, and it's gonna be even longer than a week because it's a nine-day readathon. We have so many days to just read a -thon. Um, so that's a cool thing. So I will be doing one for that. As for like run of the mill reading vlogs, just like every day weekly. Um, probably not anytime soon because I'm about to go back to school for July and then I'm doing like the read fun and then I'll be on vacation so I'll be doing weekly vlogs for that and then I go back to school. But maybe like I will do like a winter break reading vlog, that would be fun. Um, so definitely it's something I have to plan in advance. I also want to do a 24 hour reading vlog at some point, maybe before I go away I'll be able to film one of those if not after, but I do want to do a, um, I do want to do a, um, I want to go back to doing those weekly reading vlogs because they were a lot of fun. So since you guys are telling me that Passenger is sci-fi, I'm going to go put it on my sci-fi shelf. And uh, I'm excited to be making changes because literally every time I redo my shelves, like I keep the same books together. So it's really fun um, to switch it up. When am I going to London? I will be in London from August 15th to the 20th, and then from the 25th to the, or the night of the 25th, 26th to the 30th. Um, so I'm really excited. <laughs> Alrighty, so let us do, um, you know what, let's do this one down here, and we'll do the other fantasy up here. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I should probably do the other fantasy first because I feel like I have a better. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like sitting here staring at my books. I'm like, I don't know how to format this. Okay. So I have a decent amount of books left. Um, so yeah, but I'm very excited to go to London. Uh, do you take, take care of your books or do you kind of wreck your books as you fold back the pages and stuff? Um, I, I take a decent care of my books, you know, like I, I definitely like keeping them in good shape, but I mean like <laughs> my one fatal flaw with reading and like so many of you are going to be disgusted is that I eat while I read all the time. So on occasion, like I will get stains on my books. So that's definitely the biggest way that I, um, like don't take care of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is probably the like biggest extent of me like not taking care of my books. But I also don't like keep them in like pristine covers or whatever. Um, Kitty Cat, thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate it. Have you ever gone through a phase of not wanting to read? Um, definitely when I was younger. So I was a huge reader when I was a kid. Like literally could not stop reading. Always at the library. I had my own little like library at home. Um, and then as I went into like elementary school, no, elementary school is when I was a big reader. Um, so I like read Harry Potter and got super into reading again and like Harry Potter was my life. And then going into middle school, I got into Twilight. And so after Twilight is when I went through a phase of not really reading. I would just reread Harry Potter every single year, and that was like the extent of it. And then when I got into my senior year of high school, that's when I got back into reading like I do now. And since my senior year of high school, I definitely have not gone through like a phase of not reading. Um, I'm pretty like, pretty on top of it with my reading now, um, because it's something that brings me so much joy, and like I literally can't imagine my life without reading at the moment. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so since getting back into reading, uh, my love of reading has not faltered, I would say, if that answers your question. 
Uh, have you read the second trilogy of Saturn Me? No, I have not, but I'm planning to. Um, I would really like to get into reading more of, um, I definitely want to read the new series, but I need to reread the old one first. Um, is it hard to grow on booktube? You know, you will get some very varied opinions on this because some people grow very easily and some people do not grow easily. So it really depends on the person. Um, I would say that you can, you know, it's not impossible. Um, but I just don't think anyone should expect to go in and um, like automatically grow very easily because that's not how it works. But I think that you can grow on book two pretty easily. Um, a lot of it comes down to like luck and just making the right kind of videos at the right time. Um, but also at the core of it is like showing your personality and putting effort into the videos and like showing you care about um, the books that you are talking about on your channel. Oh, I also really like how this one came out too. Um, but I get so annoying when books are like slightly different sizes. And yeah, that's pretty good. And now I have one more shelf. What the heck? That's wild. Um, I'm almost done. Wow. Um, <laughs> I spy with my little eye an amazing book about shame from a very some guy. You would be correct. Um, the cats, thank you so much for the donation again. I really appreciate it. Uh, when did you start listening to audiobooks and why? I love this question because it's actually an interesting story. Um, so for the biannual bibliothon, which is a readathon that I helped start many years ago back in 2015, and I also, um, not only did I help start it, but I've been a host for many years and I'm hosting again for the final Bibliothon this summer. Um, it's the last one we're ever doing, so it is a great time for you to give it a try if you're interested. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? So, yeah, so um, one of our challenges one year was to read a book in a different format than you ever have before or that you like don't normally read from. And for me, I decided to choose an audiobook because I had literally never listened to an audiobook before. So the way I got into audiobooks was I listened to the audiobook of City of Only Fire, which I obviously had read many times before. So I was like, if I read a book that I've loved in the past, like that's a pretty good, um, you know, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to like understand everything easily and comprehend it because it's a story I already know. Because that was the biggest thing I was worried about with, um, you know, with <laughs> why can't I think um, with audiobooks, and I really enjoyed it. So, like, hallelujah! I'm glad everything worked out for me the way I wanted it to. Um, so yeah. So then I really enjoyed it. And then the next audiobook I think I listened to was A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I really loved A Court of Thorns and Roses um, when I listened to that on audiobook. So yeah, it came from the readathon, and then it went into, um, you know, and part of the reason why I think I enjoyed it in the end is because I read a book first, or like I listened to a book that I had already read in the past, so the content was easily accessible to me, if that makes sense. Um, have I seen the King of Crows cover? What is King of Crows? Am I missing? I don't know who that's by. I've seen a few people mention it before. <laughs> um, let's see the questions. Uh, where do I live? I am from New York. Um, so yeah, I love living in New York. It's a good time. It's a fun place. Um, I can't believe after all this, too, I'll still have, like, two whole, um, I'll still have, one more time to study. 
I still have two like shelves left, which is pretty cool. And now I'm just stuck trying to figure out the best way for me to organize these. I think I'm just going to put the rest of the Winter's Time series behind it to open up that space because I don't like as much as I like just playing every single book, I just don't think it's necessary sometimes, you know? You know? Um, let's see. Cats or dogs. I love both. I really, really love both. Um, you know? I don't really have a preference. I've never had either, so I can't really speak to, um, I can't really speak to, like, which one's really better. <laughs> um, but I love me and cats and some dogs. Um... Do I have a library card in the city? I I don't, but my friends have recommended that I do get one. So maybe I will be here. Let's see. I'm so close to being done. Oh my god, this is like the last stack of books to put on. <laughs> wow. I'm done. That's my bookshelf organization video. It's so exciting. So let me um give you a little tour around. And then we can chat for a couple more minutes, um, and then I will head off. So let's give you a little recap. Let's start from the beginning, and I will carry my laptop around. Um, so sorry if I give you guys vertigo or something. So here I have Harry Potter, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, and my Rick Riordan slash Magisterium shelf. Um, then I have... Shadow Hunter shelf. So I have my Mortal Instrument shelf, my Infernal Devices shelf, and Will Will has fallen over a bit, so I don't know if I can fix him. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> um, then I have my Dark Artifices shelf and my Foreign Editions of City of Bones shelf. Um, I'm realizing that this probably is causing a lot of shakiness and I don't want to disturb you guys. Also, Kitty Cat, thank you so much for the donation. Um, how did you hear about the Mortal Instruments? So I heard about the Mortal Instruments for the first time because um, I went to the movies and the person I was seeing the movies with wanted to see the Mortal Instruments because it was like about demons. And then I wanted to see something different, but I was like, okay, like whatever, I will go to... Um, See this movie, because you want to see it. And then um, we went and got out of the movie, and I fell in love with the movie. I adored it. So I saw the movie first, and I had no idea they had books attached to them. So that night, I went to research the movie, because I wanted to like see the actors more. And um, I ended up finding out that they were books. So I got the books from the library. And... Um, History, the rest of it is history. Okay, so let me finish showing you. Um, so then we have, those are all of my mental health books. And then I have my LGBT books. All my LGBT contemporaries. Not like all of them, but like ones that focus on LGBT issues. Um, we have science fiction and young adult thrillers. Then we have paranormal fantasy and science fiction. Then we have high fantasy and which is like mental health issues, uh, not mental health issues, um, vampire books, <laughs> which like I was willing to open up to more paranormal books, but all the vampire books put on there. I'm like, I'm not cleaning. <laughs> um, down here, I have what I consider like my serious issue contemporary books. Um, you know, they deal with like death and sexism and addiction and sexual assault and stuff. So that's what those books are all for. Um, this is some like own voices books written. Um, of authors from like different races and marginalized communities. Then I have a continuation of that shelf over here. I have middle grade over here, which is like mostly middle grade fantasy, but there's a few contemporaries in there. 
And then down all the bottom of these shelves are my Brant's reader copies, which are all books that were printed before the book was actually published. Um, so then that is the big case, the four book bookcase that I'm super happy with. Um, and so let me uh, go through and um, see what other uh, books in here that I can show you. So then this is my other uh, shelf, which you guys like mostly saw, but I'll just go over it <laughs> if you happen to only just arrive. Um, so over there I have my floating bookshelf in that corner, which is pretty cool, but it's mostly like a um, flow over thing. Um, Kitty Cat, thank you for the donation. You don't have to apologize for the spam of questions. I appreciate everyone's questions. Um, I've really enjoyed checking. Uh, I've really enjoyed chatting with you all. So up there in that corner is kind of like my childhood books. Um, so I have like my original copies of Harry Potter that I read on, up there, my um, series of unfortunate events books, and some other like middle grades and children books. Um, then I have adult psychological thrillers. Then I have dystopians. Then I have paranormal urban fantasy. Then I have contemporary fantasy. That's more like, this shelf is kind of like a mixture of high fantasy and like historical fantasy. There's like a couple of historical fantasy on that side and some other ones. This blank shelf is going to be like another contemporary shelf. <laughs> um, but I just have a lot of space now. Then they have my adult shelf down there, which I didn't touch because, like, I, it's the small amount of adult books that I have. <laughs> um, another fantasy. Down at the bottom, which you can't even see, down at the bottom is kind of a random shelf. Um, there's some graphic novels. There's some adult. There's some nonfiction. There's some memoirs. There's some anthologies. One of those shelves that just, like, is an amalgamation of different stuff. Um, and then down here is really my school book. So this is like all of my textbooks, like psychology works. Um, it's where I keep like my school, like notebook and whatnot. Um, and that's my live bookshelf reorganization. organization. <laughs> um, where is Red Queen by Victoria ADR? I got rid of those books and sold them to someone who wanted them more than myself a couple of years ago. Um, so yeah. That is the live bookshelf organization. I will sit and chat with you guys for 15 more minutes um, because you have sat with me for, that would make it three hours in total, which is really, really unbelievable. So shout out to those of you that have been here that long or those of you who just decided to join later. I really appreciate you um, watching me as I reorganize my bookshelf. Favorite mental health book. Um, I have to go with What I Lost by Alexander Ballard. It is about a girl with an eating disorder, and I really resonated with it. I find it to be the best fiction work for um, young adults in eating disorder recovery, because it's one of the only books about eating disorders that really focuses on the process of recovery as opposed to having an eating disorder. Um, so I love that one. Um, Little and Lion is also a really great mental health book. It's about a girl whose brother has bipolar disorder. Um, and it's really about showing what it's like to live with someone who has a serious mental illness. Um, really, really profound book. Love it. How long has it taken you to accumulate all of your books? So I started collecting books or buying books and, and acquiring them for myself. Um, in like 2014, I would say. I got the only books I've owned really have been like, Harry Potter, and pretty much all those books that are on that shelf up there. Um, so like Harry Potter, the uh, series of unfortunate events, and a few books from my childhood. Then for Christmas of 2013, I got um, a box set of the first five books in the Mortal Instruments series. And so, um, so that was when like I started getting new books to own. So after that, I started buying books for the first time for myself. So I usually say 2014, the very beginning of 2014, is um, really where I started acquiring books. So that's over five and a half years now. <laughs> um, and I also 
Help me all to keep in mind that I also get sent so many books from publishers. Um, and I also get a lot of books from subscribers of people who like want to send me a book that like either they know that I want to read or it's a book that they think that I would enjoy that they have read. So I get books from a lot of other places that people who are just like your regular everyday reader, not a booktuber, um, don't get. So that's really important to remember too when you're looking at the size of my collection. It's like I would not have bought all of these myself. <laughs> um, so yeah. So that's pretty cool. Um, Sam, thanks so much for buying uh, what I lost for me. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, do you have other questions? There were a couple of them that I really liked. Uh, where do you keep the letters from your viewers that have mailed you? I think I'm going to write you more letters because talking to you is so nice. I would love to receive more letters from you, Sarah. Um, I have pretty much two big boxes in my bedroom closet, and that's where I keep things that I am sent that are not books. So when people send me, like, art projects or photos or portraits and stuff i keep that in one box and then i have another box for all of my letters um and i try and like keep them matched up with the original envelope and whatnot um but i keep everything i have stuff that i got back in like 2016 at, like the first book kind i went to where people like knew who i was and stuff um so yeah so do I have a P.O. box for fancy sun letters i do it is in the description of all of my videos and you guys are always welcome to send me Anything you would like. Um, I get books, I got goodies and like snacks from other countries and, and just letters and postcards and like whatever you guys want to send me, I'm always happy to receive. Um, if I always appreciate it when people leave me their like Instagram handle or Twitter handle or even email or something, because I like like saying thank you to people who send me stuff and I can't always uh, have the time or the money to read that. Uh, to write back every single time. So leaving it uh, away from me to contact you online is always appreciated, but you're welcome to send me anything you would like to. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the donation, Kitty Cats. What are you studying at school at? Why? I am studying mental health counseling. Um, I got my bachelor's in psychology with a minor in criminal justice. And so now I'm getting my master's in clinical mental health counseling. And I've always wanted to be some form of therapist or counselor because of the mental health issues that I've gone through. So um, my goal is to help others. Specifically, I want to work with teens and young adults at the moment um, to help them through their issues and offer support to them because I know what it's like to be in that position. So yeah, that's what I'm studying. And I am super pumped to continue. Uh, favored by sexual character, um, Magnus Bane, of course. Love me some Magnus Bane. Um, I love Helen Blackthorn and Mark Blackthorn. Um, other more sexual characters, I love Levi from Ace of Shades is a great bi character. Mm. Oh, who else do I love? Um, I am very convinced that Lou LeBlanc from Serpent and Dove, which is the fantasy that comes out in September. I am very convinced she's bisexual, but it's not canon, so that's just a head canon now. Um, Emma, do you mind if I also get an opportunity to see faces you? Not at all. I don't agree with this ideology that people own tattoos unless it's like your original artwork. Yes, I believe you own that, but when it comes to like someone getting like the same quote or the same picture, like it's not the big of a deal, so you don't have to ask me for permission. Um, have I seen any Broadway shows? I have seen a couple. Um, I have seen Wicked Chicago, Jersey Boys, um, Mean Girls, and it, um, I think Harry Potter and the Chris Child also counts as a Broadway show. So those are definitely ones that I've seen and I have enjoyed them all. <laughs> um, any hard of hearing representation recommendations? I highly recommend uh, you Are Welcome Universe, Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Garner. It is a fantastic book about an Indian deaf girl that not enough people have read, and I highly recommend it. Um, I have a spoiler for your review on my channel of it if you're interested in more deaf or hard of hearing books. Totally check out that review because it's a fantastic book. How do you finish so many books in a month? Um, I have a video on how to read with a busy schedule, which definitely has some tips for this. Um, as for me, the main way that I 
uh, read 20 books per month is listening to audiobooks and reading different physical books. Um, at any given time, I'm typically reading one physical book and one audiobook. And it really helps me because, um, you know, I stick to reading physical books whenever I can, whether it's before bed or if I'm waiting for an appointment to start, if I'm commuting somewhere. I read, or like on my lunch break and stuff, that's like my number one time to read. So, um, you know, I still have a lot of time to physically read, but listening to audiobooks allows me to retain stories in times when I can't physically read, like when I am working out or walking or driving somewhere. So um, it, it basically like doubles the amount of books I'm able to finish every month. And usually it is like, I've read like three audiobooks and listened to four. Uh, I've read I've read three physical books and listened to four audiobooks, or I've read five physical books and listened to six audiobooks. Like it's pretty even. So that it, I basically double the amount of books I read every month just by listening to audiobooks. Um, Kitty Cats, what books would you recommend about friendship? I have a whole video on this. I feel like sometimes like um, people ask me for like recommendations or they're, they're like, can you make a video at this? And it's just like I made it before they discovered my channel. So I do have a full video on books about friendship and it's about books that either have no romance or where romance is a small, small theme and friendship is the overall um, intent. Um, a couple that I would recommend is, um, I just talked about Your Welcome Universe by Winnie Garner. That's a wonderful book about friendship. Um, what other books about friendship? There's so many good contemporaries that I love that are about friendship. Um, a List of Cages by Robin Rowe is a really sweet and heartbreakingly emotional story that focuses a lot on friendship. Um, there's a couple more. I really do recommend checking out that video though because it'll have like all the great um, friendship reps. Um, let's see, what are my all-time favorite trope? Oh God. Um, I, I just love the whole like people finding out that they're a part of like a supernatural race or like they have magical abilities like whatever it's not necessarily the chosen one trope but um one second i have to text my sister back <laughs> um but yeah whatever the trope is where like the main character finds out that they have like some they're like a part of this race or they're they have some natural abilities that is my favorite and it's probably because books have always been used as an escapism for me um because i as a teenager like i've just loved imagining being that person where like you know the 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 swoony love interest swoops in and is like you're a part of this supernatural race of shadow hunters or you know Hagrid comes to rescue you saying that you are a wizard, you know? So that's definitely my favorite trope and it's one that I will always revert back to. Um, biggest disappointment of the year. Do you mean like book or like in life? <laughs> um, biggest book disappointment I said earlier is Hidden Bodies by Caroline Katniss. I really did not like it. <laughs> um, how long did it take you to read The Shadow on the Chronicles when we first started reading them? Um, I don't know for sure. On average, it took me about two days per book. So I would say six, but maybe like 12 days, like 10 days to 14 days probably is how long it took me to read all of them for the first time. Because I definitely read City Coming Fire in the span of eight hours over two days. <laughs> um, I have a book club within my friend group. Is there any books that you would recommend? Ooh, I have so many great books that I feel are great for book clubs, but it really depends on if you are looking for a more like real world story if you or if you are looking for fantasy. If you're looking for fantasy, I definitely would recommend The Diviners by Libba Bray. It is a hefty fantasy, but it's set in 1920s New York and it's very paranormal and it's super fun and I think so many different people will like it. Um, if you're looking for a more adult book, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo is an always like auto recommendation. Um, and if you are looking for like a a book like about like social justice and like real world issues, I'd really recommend People Kill People by Ellen Hopkins because when I finished that book, I was like, all I want is a book club to like discuss this book with other people um, because like they're they're obviously like I can discuss my favorite books with you guys, but it is almost like. It's not the same as being face to face with the book club because I post it 
and I, you know, it's like weeks in between when I film a video and post it, and then I have to wait for you guys to respond, you have to wait for me to respond. So I really would have loved to have like a, a group discussion about people kill people because it was so fun. Um, and it's about gun violence. So if you're looking for something, like I feel like especially if you are in like a high school um, or like a, a college and like you're, you're trying to talk about timely issues, people kill people is a fantastic book. Um, do I have a favorite supernatural being or creature? Um, I love, I, I don't really have a favorite one. I love all of them. I love a good fairy book. I love a good vampire book. Um, what else do I love? You know, vampires versus werewolves was a big thing for a while. I love wizards and witches and witchcraft. That's always fine. Um, I would say maybe like Wizards, witches, like people who have like supernatural abilities, that would probably be my favorite creature, if that counts. <laughs> um, tips on getting back into reading. Um, rereading your favorite book is always a good one. If you have been like in a slump for some time, uh, like rereading Harry Potter, The Mortal Instruments is always a good way for me to get back into it. Um, reading a book from a new, like from an author that you've been waiting to read is another great way because I feel like there's always a stronger hype when you have an attachment to the author that you're reading from. So like the newest Sarah J. Mass book or the newest Holly Black book, um, I feel like that's a great way. Um, also something short sometimes is really good to help get you back into reading like you know, sometimes you just can't start out with a 600 page book after you've taken two weeks off of reading. Sometimes you need a short little novella or a light contemporary in order to get you back into things. So that's definitely what I would recommend. All right, I'm going to take one more question, two more questions um, to sign off because it's been three hours. So thank you guys so much for watching this with me. Um, so when did you get into reading and how? So I have always been a reader. Um, since I was a kid, like some of my earliest memories are going to the library and participating in summer reading events, um, you know, reading books like on vacation with my family. So I, I have always been a reader. And then, as I said, not too long ago, um, when I got into middle school after like the Harry Potter and Twilight craze, the only book that I would read is Harry Potter. Just because, like, uh, number one, I feel like I didn't really know how to discover new books, and I just wasn't interested in reading anything but Harry Potter. Like, my I had other things to do in my life. And then I um, got into high school, still, like, was not a big reader. And um, my senior year, all my friends had graduated the previous year, so I didn't have a lot of friends in my school year. So I was very lonely. I didn't have a lot of people to connect to, so I turned to reading books. So like, instead of like sitting in the cafeteria with my friends like I would have last year, I would go to the library or go to Dunkin' Donuts and read books. Um, so that's how I got back into it, and the way I discovered The Mortal Instruments was from the movie, and then I discovered BookTube, and that's how I started finding out about even more books that were like The Mortal Instruments and Harry Potter that I wanted to read. So interacting um, with the online book community was one of the biggest pushes for me to get back into reading. But it all started as a child, and then my like reading revival came with um, the Moral Instruments. And here we are today, and I have not stopped reading since, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. <laughs> um, but that concludes this book organization, bookshelf organization video. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you guys do want a deeper look into my bookshelves, I will be doing a bookshelf tour sometime soon. Um, don't, you know, hold your breath because <laughs> it'll be a while, but hopefully soon. Um, and this will be live to watch later on my channel so you guys can pick up where you left off if you popped in a little late or something. Uh, but I had so much fun chatting with you guys and doing a little Q&A, talking to you and having your help um, organizing all my bookshelves. And shout out to those of you who I recognize who have been here all three hours. That's really amazing. <laughs> um, yes, I will chat with you guys online soon. I have some new videos coming. And um, I'll talk later. But thank you so much for watching. Bye.